って、最近辛くなった状況が続きましたね、また。という形になりましたよね。はいいや本当に一二戦のこの中村明の活躍か、今日も第三戦、どんな活躍を見せてくれるのか、非常に楽しみです。という形で、現在は四連勝、いい形で来ている、ご覧のように出場選手に絞れてましたですが、松本勇樹が上がってきました、そしてバファローズの方は本田を上げています。松本勇樹もこれでかなり調子戻してきたんでしょうね。と思いますけどね、そうじゃないと、まあ、彼がいないとなく続いて。Hello, friends and neighbors. It's baseball time late at night here on the East Coast, but it's matinee day over in Japan, which means this is the midnight matinee. Welcome to Pei Pei Dome. We're joining you virtually from our respective domiciles. Gabe Lerman on the call here with Mike Beely. Mike, how are you doing this fine day? As always, I'm excited and hopped up on coffee to get through this with you. I have some green tea sitting next to me. Lord knows I will need it to keep both the vocal cords flexible and to keep myself awake. You're seeing the lineup for the Oryx Buffaloes, the visitor club here on your screen. Batting first, the right fielder, Tokumasa Chano. Batting third, the third baseman, or second, the third baseman, Yuma Mune. Batting third, the center fielder, Keita Nakagawa. Batting fourth, the DH, Tomoya Mori. And we'll hold on the rest of that because now it's the Hawks up on the, the screen. Batting first, the first baseman, Akira Nakamura. Batting second, the shortstop, Kenta Imamiya. Batting third, and the designated hitter today, Kensuke Kondo. Batting fourth and right field, Yuki Yanagita. Batting fifth, the center fielder, Taisei Makihara. Batting sixth, the third base, Yoya Kurihara. Batting seventh, the second baseman, Isami Nomura. Batting eighth, the left fielder, Tatsuru Yanagimachi. And batting ninth, there he is, the catcher, Takuya Kai. The rest of the Oryx lineup, batting fifth, first baseman Yuma Tongu, batting sixth, left fielder Yutaro Sugimoto, batting seventh, shortstop Kotaro Kudebayashi, batting eighth, second baseman Marmon Gonzalez, and batting ninth and catching Kenya Wakatsuki, the catcher. There's Hawks manager Fujimoto. I did not know this. He actually started off as an infielder for the Hawks franchise from 1982 to 1998. And he hit for the cycle back in 1990. Ukyo Shuto, WBC champion and not playing in today's game. He's going to be on the bench. 
Lord knows we'll see him as a pinch runner eventually. Looks like there's some sort of giveaway for the kids there. That's quite cute. So, we're going into today's game between the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks and the York's Buffaloes, with the Hawks now sporting a one game lead on the Buffaloes. Courtesy of two straight wins in the last two games, the York Buffaloes are looking to avoid a sweep. In particular, they got walked off on Saturday, Akira Nakamura, with the walk off single. The Hawks are 20 and 11 at home. The Buffaloes are 19, 12, and 1 on the road. There you see your defensive alignment. I know normally on the podcast, Mike and I have mentioned Yanagita hasn't really played much in the field, but he's got the start in right field today, moving Yanagimachi to left. Kensuke Kondo gets a day off from fielding. He will be the DH today. We're to keep an eye on the second baseman, Isami Nomura. I know uh, Jose, who we interviewed for our Meet the Pitch 2023 series, was particularly fond of the guy. 2021 draftee got 10 home runs and 10 stolen bases as a rookie last season. And striding to the mound is the starting pitcher for the Hawks, Hugo Bando, the right-hander. Two-time Koshien and Spring High School Tournament participant. Drafted in 2018 by these Hawks. In five innings, he's only allowed one run against these Buffaloes. 2-0 record so far with a 2.87 ERA on the season. Look for him to throw a fastball, sinker, cutter, curve, and forkball combination. There you see his results so far. Moved out of the bullpen and into the rotation back on July 2nd. Last two starts have been short ones, so we may this may be a Johnny Holstaff game. But if there's one thing Bondo can do, it is control opposing lineups. It's got to be a great feeling to be added back to the starting lineup after you've been told to spend some time in the bullpen. Absolutely. I mean, there may be some pitchers who thrive on that, and if you don't have a good third pitch, you're going to be stuck in the bullpen because you can't fool pitcher batters as well. But Bondo's got that five-pitch arsenal. And here you hear the Buffalo's Owen Dunn getting noisy in the left field bleachers. Ah, I'm not going to lie. I missed that noise from the uh, 2022 season. First pitch on the way, and we are underway. Fastball clipped off Kai's glove. First strike one. As far as I'm concerned, the last couple of seasons just didn't happen. We just skipped the 2023. That's fair. Tokumasa Chano batting 271 on the season. This is his rookie year. Fourth round draft pick by the Buffaloes last season. Bondo winds and deals. Fastball in there for strike two. Chano has been able to get some starts giving Sugimoto the chance to play left instead of right with Tio Kata injured. Swing and a miss, strike three. Kai blocks it, fires the cannon to first, one down. That's going to be the key for Bondo, keeping that pitch count low, and that means a lot of swings and misses and weak contact. Looks like we got some Hawks fans in the chat. Blaze TK and Hao Khan. Hello, hello. Batting second, third baseman, Yuma Mune. More straight gas from Bondo in there for a strike.
Here's our first off-speed look from Bondo. The cutter outside for ball one, for ball two. Two and zero on the way. Inside again, ball three. Bondo trying to cheat a little bit. Kai not quite getting the calls. I'm also going to check to see when Kai switched over to the new goalie style mask. That's a fastball over for strike one. One thing I do like about the strike zone here in Japan is that they do distinguish pitch types. Mune will flare this one foul. Yanagi Machi is going to give it a look. That's off the sidewall over the head of the expensive, exciting seats. I like the uh, the Hawks uh, score above. They even show the RPM below the uh, digital zone. The count is full. Mune looking for something to swing on. Bondo deals. Chopped foul again. That's into the netting. You will note the fans in the exciting seats are given a helmet because we do not want them to get too excited and promptly get uh, brained by a foul ball. Bondo, that long windup. Chopped up the middle. That's going to be a tough play. Nomura has it on the first two down. Ah, uh, we've got our first Buffalo fan in the chat, Dan Swoveland, saying we need this one. This is going to become a heated postseason race because it's not just the fact that the Hawks and Buffaloes are squabbling at the top. The Marines are playing the fighters in the third versus fourth match. And there's only five games separating those two. Nakagawa skies this one into foul territory. Seventh round draft pick from 2018. Six home runs on the season, batting 247. Started off as a first baseman. There's been a couple of highlight reels of him there. Now he is their center fielder, giving Shuhei Fukuda from last year's Japan Series winning team the occasional day off. Fastball high, evens the count at one. Yuma Tongu, who leads the Buffaloes in batting average, waits on deck. That's almost an Ephus. Curveball floated in, misses ball two. Here you see Tomoya Mori waiting on deck. Looked like a fork ball floated in. That 338 batting average is pretty gaudy. And between Mori and Sugimoto providing the pop, Buffaloes aren't missing Masataka Yoshida that much. 3-1 on the way to Nakagawa. That one's into the... Uh, that one looked like it was headed to the luxury boxes. Full count pitch on the way from Bando. 15 pitches so far this inning. Swing and a miss, strike three. Two Ks to start the day for Hugo Bando. And now he's turning it over to his Hawks batters to take care of things in the bottom of the first. We're underway with a midnight matinee. Get stuck in, folks. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> それでは、ホークスからのお知らせです。ダブルアニバーサリーイヤーを記念して、九州8県にお住まいの方を対象に、九州エリア優待チケットを販売。8月は北九州市小倉、戸端、文字エリア、大分県、熊本県、宮崎
Now, it's worth pointing out that tickets to Hawks games aren't limited to just Japanese locals. The Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks have partnered with Kluke to offer tickets in English to select games for the remainder of the 2023 season. Be sure to visit the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks international website to learn more. And thank you to our producer for posting that in the chat. We're doing back-to-back -back weekends, folks. Next week, July 2nd, midnight Eastern, the Saitama Seibu Lions at Balloonadome will be hosting these Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. Get your Canada Day 4th of July weekend started off right with more midnight matinee. Let's take a look at Sachiya Yamazaki, lefty starter for the Buffaloes. Five and two records so far on the season, 2.94 ERA, won each of his last four decisions. They got tagged for seven runs in one inning of work in his only start against the Hawks so far this season. First pitch fastball is low. You're not going to be seeing as much velocity from Yamasaki as you will from Bando. Yamasaki usually sits between 86 and 88 miles per hour. Another fastball outside corner called strike one. Akira Nakamura, the first baseman at the plate. Chopped towards center field. Nakagawa's got a beat on it. And we'll make the grab one away quickly. In the chat, Kayomi uh, Miatic, I think it's pronounced, uh, mentions that they still aren't sure what team they want to support. And the rule here is if it's your first broadcast, you support the team that wins. That is want. true, Kayomi Miatic. Or if you actually go to games, whichever team you sit in the outfield bleachers for first. Which is how I became an aficionado for the Rakuten Eagles at the beginning of my career. Uh, Tape Collier asking about the fighters. They have no quarrel with Ham. They are not the Ham fighters. Uh, that team will be going in one hour's time at Zozo Marine Stadium against the Chiba Latte Marines. Other game active right now, the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles are hosting the Seibu Lions. That game is still in the first. Kenta Imamiya. Watches a ball sail outside for ball one. Swing and a miss, strike three. Yamasaki making short work of Imamiya. And this should be a very familiar name to folks watching from overseas. Kensuke Kondo, member of the 2023 WBC Championship squad. In fact, over the last four years, Kondo has won a baseball treble, effectively. 2019 Premier 12 Tournament Champion, 2020 Olympics Champion, and 2023 WBC Champion. Add to that his 2016 Japan Series Championship with the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters. And you have a very full awards cabinet. Curveball floated in inside ball one. Kondo's gotten some acclaim for his fielding this year. Tongu collects this one in front of the base, takes it unassisted. Quick inning. We don't need no stinking pitch clock for it. Through one, still scoreless. The game's looking for its first hit. Top of the second coming up. It'll be Mori Tongu Sugimoto here on the Midnight Matinee, brought to you by Pacific League TV. And speaking of hits, once again, thank you everybody who's joining us. And it's time for your mid-ending trivia question. And the question for you all is, who is the all-time leader in hits for the Hawks? The answer will be at the uh, midpoint of the next inning. That's a tough one. Okay, can we can we get a hint, Mike? Uh, it accompanies all versions of the Hawks. So going okay, way back so to Dai cool. Nankai. 
That's true, and I'm noticing a lot of green in the stands, and I'm thinking, wait, today's not a ha Nankai throwback. It must have been a giveaway jersey or something. If there's one thing I do appreciate about the Japanese leagues, it's their immaculate fashion sense when it comes to alternate jerseys, with one very notable exception playing in Nishinomiya. The Hawks have busted out a black with gold trim jersey alternate for their 30th anniversary in Fukuoka and their 85th anniversary as a franchise. It is sharp looking. I want that cap when I'm visiting Japan. Just the bird logo on the front, it's beautiful. The reason I bring up the green is because these Hawks will bust out the old Nankai jerseys when they're visiting the Buffaloes in Osaka because the Hawks started their existence playing in what is now the Namba Parks shopping mall. And their main color was green. Oh sure, these guys get cup holders, but I can't get it in my local MLB stadium. Rogers doesn't have cup holders? No, the Sky Dome does not, and they've even renovated half the place. Still no cup holders. Must be too expensive. Go figure. Speaking of expensive, Tomoya Mori signed a rather wealthy deal with the Buffaloes. Four years, it's $16 million total, approximately. Coming over from the Cebu Lions, catching, DHing, and knocking the stuffing out of the ball. 11 home runs, 36 RBI so far on the season. I love that batting stance of his with the hovering front leg. I've tried that in softball and promptly swung around and landed on my behind. He's in a hole 0 oh 2 quickly to Hugo Bondo, who's trusting his stuff. He'll sit 90 to 92 with the heater. That will be chopped foul. Nakamura's not even going to look at it. You playing slow pitch or uh, fast pitch? Slow pitch, own team pitch. And I, I have the welts to prove it because I'm normally my team's pitcher and I've taken a few off the legs recently. Another 0-2 on the way to Tomoya Mori. Bondo deals high, ball one. Oh, looks like we've got some uh, visitors coming in from Tampa. Swing and a miss, strike three. Bondo racks up his third K of the day. Looks like a slider on the outside. Fooled Mori. That will bring up the first baseman, Yuma Tongu, second round pick in 2018's draft. He has broken out in a big way. 407 on base, seven home runs. Not bad work for this former catcher. Normally, first base would be handled by Frank Schwindel, Marvin Gonzalez, or Takahiro Okada, but Tongu has stolen the role. Swings and misses over that fork ball. Count is one and one. That thing was just buried in the dirt. Hard to pick up. Fastball tries to pick the inner half. Nothing doing. Count is two and one. You see there the batting title race. It's not even close. Nakamura's 40 points back of Tongu. A lot of season to go still. That's skied into foul territory. Akira Nakamura says, I got it. And he does. Two down. Nakamura is a multiple Golden Glove winner at first base. No surprise that he's got the soft hands necessary. And the vision necessary to pick that up from the roof. Pretty sure the Pepe Dome lid is closed today. Until Escon Field in Kita Hiroshima opened earlier this season, Pepe Dome was the only retractable roof 
in NPB. Sugimoto laces this one to right. That's going to chase Inagita back. But Yuki makes the grab. Another 1 2 3 inning. Bondo, very effective. No base runners allowed so far from either club. Bottom of the second we go. It'll be Yanagita leading off. Makihara and Kurihara following after. And as we head to the bottom of the inning, uh, the answer to your trivia question, who leads all of the SoftBank Hawks in hits for their history, is who else but Katsuya Nomura. Ah, of course. 2,813. He also leads the franchise in home runs, if memory serves. He leads the franchise in everything. A legendary player. I look forward to seeing some of his kit when I visit the Hawks Museum, which is atop Namba Parks in Osaka, near Namba Station. I know a lot of people have started to go to Japan now that they've opened up their borders again, and that includes a lot of baseball games. A good number of teams in the Pacific League are happy to sell you tickets. Foreign credit cards are accepted. I know that the Rockton Eagles have a foreign language website, as do these Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. Otherwise, you will have to navigate the, the glories of Google Translate. There are some companies as well that will happily resell you tickets in a pinch. I've never actually had to buy the uh, my tickets uh, myself. Somehow, someone else always just does it for me. I, I did it once for my all 12 teams all by train trip back in 2019. And because the uh, table broke in Google Translate, I accidentally bought fighters tickets for the wrong day. I had to eat money on that one. Pete Neems, I noticed in the chat, was watching the London game. That's right. Cardinals and Cubs from London Stadium earlier today. So that's a full day of baseball from 1 p.m. Eastern all the way to uh, whenever this game ends up. which will probably be well after 3 in the morning. And Agita watches ball 2 sail pass. Wakatsuki gave the Empire a good look. Couldn't get the change up. Fan from Melbourne, Australia. Swing and a miss from Yanagita. Yeah, I've got my Yanagita jersey on too. I wear the jersey of whoever the home team is. So I'm sporting the Yanagita even though I am ostensibly a Buffaloes fan. That's a floated curveball. That's a fair ball into the right field corner. On it quickly is Chano Yanagita with a leadoff double. Possibly more as Gonzalez bobbles it. And you can see why not only Yanagita wears the captain's C above the K on his jersey, but also why he is one of the greatest players in NPB history. Just waits on that EFIS pitch. Bounces off the first base bag and into the right field corner. There was a perfect, like, Kabuki Mie pose, pause in that swing. Yanagita waits and times it up perfectly. Eugene asking what my favorite NPB ballpark is. I hate to say it, it's in the other league, it's Koshien. It can't be anything other than Koshien. Taisei Makihara, playing center field, but has shown up in the highlight reel, playing second base and third. Now with a runner on in scoring position. Amasaki deals. Chopped up the middle, high bouncer. Going to be a tough play for Gonzalez. He barehands it! And makes the play. Top 20 plays candidate right there. Marwin Gonzalez says, let me show you how we do it in the bigs. Bounced right in front of the plate. Marwin says, yoink. And gets the speedy Makihara. One away, runner at third for Ryoya Kurihara who has had quite the interesting career in terms of position playability. He started his career as a catcher 
then moved to the outfield. Now he's picking up how to play third base. Eight home runs and a 244 batting average on the line so far. Cutter outside, or inside ball one. You almost expect the suicide squeeze here, given that this is NPB and there's nothing a Japanese manager loves more than bunts. Sachi deals. Strike called. Fastball just about right down Broadway. Or Giondori, since this is Fukuoka. Fans of all ages are encouraged to get up and cheer, so even if your Japanese is equivalent to that of a grade school child, the Owen Don will be happy to have you. 1 1 on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Man, that fooled even the cameraman. Kunihara, the alternate captain. That's something I haven't seen in NPB before. You'll notice the C on his jersey is silver. That's more of a hockey thing. Waits on it. One, two on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Wakatsuki blocks it. Checks back the runner Yanagita at third. Throws down to Tongu to complete the K. Two down here in the bottom of the second. Beautiful looking fork ball buried in the dirt. Yamasaki is known as a control pitcher and he's got command tonight. Isami Nomura wearing double nines. Trying to uh, imitate maybe uh, Yuki and Agita who wears a single nine. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Change up outside. Nomura was drafted last year or two years ago in 2021. First Pacific League rookie to have a 10 10 season in his rookie year since Hiromitsu Kumano. In 1985, change up in the dirt outside, one and one. You'll also hear the fans in the outfield cheering Isami instead of Nomura. That's because there's another Nomura on the Hawks, with the first name of Daiju. Two out, one one on the way from Yamasaki. Swing and a miss. Change up again. Whereas Bondo's found success with the heater, Yamasaki is showing his finesse with the off-speed content. Now, if you're in this spot, do you go back to the off-speed or you try and challenge him with a fastball up? I know that's more of a more North American thing, but certain pitchers are bringing that to the NPB. I'd say go with whatever keeps working for you. One, two on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Yanagita's leadoff double is stranded. We're still scoreless through two. And as we head to the top of the third, your next trivia question is Oryx based. Who is the all time hits leader for Oryx? And that is covering every iteration of the Buffaloes and every team that they have absorbed since. Well, don't cry scoreboard. You don't have to go boo-hoo. Is that the new moo? And Maybe. Boo. <laughs> or and the police when the Eagles are in town. Yo. Uh, looks like Moe Muntz is uh, chiming in on how Pacific League games are, always appreciates these games on YouTube. And we appreciate you coming in and chatting with us as we stay up late with a midnight matinee. Now, if you do want 
to watch more Pacific League baseball, you have multiple options. If you're located in the United States or Canada, you can visit watchdingo.com and watch all Pacific League games simulcast for free without commentary. Or if you prefer having an English voice in your ears, catch one game per day on time delay on FTF Sports. Check your set-top box listings for channels. That's 1 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday through Sunday. That's not an official Hawks photographer, is it? I don't think so. The camera's I'm... massive. You're allowed to bring in just about anything, including outside food or drink, into NPB stadiums. It's one of the best parts of the in-game atmosphere. Bando. Throws a low fork ball to Kotaro Kudebayashi to start off the top of the third. Slider not quite finding the strike zone there. Fastball outside, ball two. Uh, Ashley asking, is there anywhere to watch the other league games? No. Unfortunately, the other league does not have the centralized broadcasting and marketing arm that the Pacific League does. That's why we're able to offer Pacific League TV, all games, including the farm team and a decade's worth of archives for just 1,500 yen a month. No blackouts, no VPN required, as Kai and Nakamura have a dead heat to that foul ball. So central is not centralized. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Never thought uh -huh. of that one. Yeah, that, that's a little on the nose there, Mike. It's Some fun. teams do have their own streaming services, but we don't talk about those. Well, I don't think they live in the Dark Ages. They live in the 20th century. They live where the money's at. 2-2 Two -two count on the way to Kudebayashi. Chopped towards second base. Nomura collects on to first. One down. On the most recent podcast, we mentioned some of the changes that the majors have brought in, including things like a pitch clock and reduction of defensive shifts. And this is what I mean by saying that NPB really doesn't need a pitch clock. One, because the game speed is fast enough as is. And two, because that means fewer Owen Don songs. And that's part of the appeal of the whole Japanese baseball experience. I don't think there's many pitchers in MPB that drag their feet like they were overseas. That's a highway speed curveball floated in. Too high for Marvin Gonzalez. Nine home runs on the season so far for Marwin. His first in Japan. After a career that saw him go from Houston to Minnesota to New York. His multi-position eligibility makes him a valuable piece of this Oryx lineup. Hey, we got someone checking in from Costa Rica. Hello. Good to see you, Edwin. Marwin waits on the 1-1. Sliced foul and out of play. We're seeing more off-speed stuff from Bando. He's shown them a lot of the fastball. Now we're going to see more of the off-speed from Hugo Bando. Bando's also an interesting case because he had elbow surgery when he did, after his debut in 2020. And it took him until 2022 to start to work his way into the rotation. And even now, he's something of a swingman. Cutter in there for a called strike three. If my count is right, that's five or six Ks on the night so far for Bando. He's matching Yamasaki K for K. And we get to see the home plate umpire's called strike three action. Some of the ones here in NPB do have very exaggerated ones. Wakatsuki Kenya, the catcher. Known as a fantastic pitch framer. You've seen his work with Yamasaki so far today. He actually won best battery award in NPB with Yoshinobu Yamamoto back in 2021. Okay. 
Swing and a miss. Strike one. Got some interesting questions coming in on the live chat. Let's go to Roderick Tillman first. Has any NPB teams ever traveled to the U.S. to play any MLB teams? Uh, not in a very long time. NPB teams actually did used to travel to North America for spring training and for playing minor league teams back in like the 30s, 40s, and 50s. They used to go on barnstorming tours. That's how the Yomiuri Giants got their name in honor of Lefty O'Doul and the San Francisco Seals who they played against on a barnstorming ring tour shortly after their formation in the 1930s. That's grounded off to third. Kurihara shows off the cannon. Two down. Sorry, three down. Bondo, another clean sheet. Both pitchers have faced the minimum as we head to the bottom of the third. And as we head to the bottom of the third, the answer to your trivia question, which was who in Oryx history across all their teams and history has the most hits? The answer is Yutaka Fukumoto, who played from 1969 to 1988. 2,543 hits, played his entire career with the Hongqiu Braves. And he's also the record holder for the most uh, stolen bases in NPB history, right? Over a thousand in his career. Uh, yeah, he was present when uh, Ricky Henderson broke uh, the world record, and he presented him with the base, if I recall correctly. Oh, that's a nice gesture. And to answer the question about MPB teams in the U.S., um, they've actually done it a bit more recently. Um, 60s and 70s teams would go over, and as recently as the 90s, a lot of teams would have spring training. Um, in Arizona, in, right. In Arizona. Yeah. The Fighters, I believe, were the last team to really still do that, and... Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic kind of put an end to that. I don't know if they'll begin doing that again. That's true. Most of the spring training in Japan takes place in Okinawa or Miyazaki Prefecture on the island of Kyushu. A friend of mine would actually go to the uh, fighters spring training every year in Arizona to get autographs. And a lot of the players were surprised that he had their baseball cards and knew who they were. And they I'm, would flock to him. I'm double checking this because the first Japanese player to play in the bigs, Masanori Murakami, came from the Nankai Hawks, now known as the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. And it, that was an exchange program where they got sent to the Giants single A team. So he showed up briefly. He didn't, the whole team didn't go over, just him. So that doesn't answer the question. Oh, and uh, Eugene, Watch Dingo is indeed only live. Pacifically TV is live and on demand. So you don't have to settle for just the highlights we post to this YouTube channel. You can watch any game. In fact, if you go back to 2013, you'll even be able to spot me in the stands. I'll tell you exactly which game on an upcoming inning break. Left fielder Tatsuru Yanagimachi leading off the bottom of the third. Yamasaki pumps in the fastball, strike one. Oh, now we're known as the Podcast Boys by Bipolar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. These midnight matinees started before the podcast, but I guess that's how we're known. So, Eugene, take a look on this YouTube channel for the podcast, as in Pacific League. We've got seven episodes so far, and we'll be recording another one on Tuesday. That one's fouled out of play. I'm still trying to figure out how to get these onto things like Spotify or other podcast services, because it is just audio, and we definitely should be able to do that. One-two on the way from Sachi Yamasaki. Called strike three! Yanagimachi, with some silent disagreement with the Empire. That was an expression for sure. Crossfire fastball, good frame job by Wakatsuki behind the plate. Uh, the other day I watched a clip from the 1970s and a pitcher, I won't name him just because I don't know exactly what the issue was, but he straight up walked to home plate and began to outline the strike zone and did not get ejected. Here's one of the most legendary parts of this Hawks lineup, Takuya Kai, a.k.a. the Kai Cannon. If you see any base runners from the Buffaloes, we'll be sure to point out his throwing arm. That's a highway speed curveball. 95 kilometers an hour. That's below 60 miles an hour. I don't know what the term 
I think we talked about this. There is no real term for ephus in Japanese. Second time through the order, Mike, remind me to mention how many Japan Series championships each of the Hawks lineup has won. Because this was the team of the 2010s for sure. Change up outside, count as two and one. I think uh, most highlight clips I see, they just call it a slow curve. No matter how slow it actually is. Kai launches this one to right. Chano has a beat on it. Two away. Back to Akira Nakamura. So this is second time through the lineup. So we get to mention the fact that Akira Nakamura has seven Japan Series championship rings. He started in the with the team back at the beginning of the 2010s. And as a result, he racked up all from that four-peat from 2017, 2020, and then some. Three Golden Gloves at first was the Pacific League Climax Series and Japan Series MVP in 2020 and led the Pacific League in hits in 2014. So quite the stacked awards cabinet for Akira Nakamura. I think the thing he has to be most proud of though, he is Jim Lapbap's most favorite Hawks player. I interviewed Jim Lapbap back in the, oh, that's grounded to third, Mune Knocks it down. Close play at first. In time! Mune showing off why he's a Golden Glover. Ending the bottom of the third unless manager Hiroshi Fujimoto says, let's take another look at that. I interviewed uh, Jim Lapbap for the 2022 version of Making the Pitch. That and the 2023 version are both available on the Pacific League English YouTube channel, which you're watching to right now through three we're not even at one in the morning here on the east coast nil nil back to the top of the fourth back to the buffaloes the only people crying right now are the concessions vendors because they gotta hustle their bustle to make their quota and as we head to the top of the fourth your next trivia question is rather topical who is a single season leader in strikeouts as a batter for the hawks and oh, your that's hint a is, tough one. He is in this game right now. Okay, that that narrows it down. Yeah. Simon Schwartz, hello, hello. Ashley has an important question. How do ticket prices compare to MLB? Given that I visited all twelve teams in 2019, the average I spent on a ticket was around thirty dollars Canadian, and that got me anywhere from behind home plate at Meiji Jingu Stadium to the second deck at Zozo Marine Stadium, to unreserved seats in Kyoseta Dome, to outfield bleachers at Rakuten Mobile Park Miyagi, or previously mentioned Koshien. Then again, if you're out in the outfield bleachers, you're in the cheer section, and you're a part of the most raucous crowd in all of baseball. I did a independent study, if you will, of this. I compared uh, a day out at a baseball game for a family of four, both in MLB and NPB. And for the MLB thing, I took the Yankees, being that they are the most popular team. And I'll just say that I included souvenirs and food, and um, a day out at the ballpark for a Yankees fan would probably bankrupt a normal person. Whereas uh, MPB uh, it was rather affordable, under $200. Fastball pumped in against Chano. You see the heat map there. Chano struggling a little bit with the inside and outside low pitches so far this season. Mars commenting the bull section in the stadium look absolutely massive. Pepe Dome is one of the larger stadiums in NPB. Again, it's also the, up until just this season, the only one with a retractable roof. Pepe Dome currently seats 40,000 fans for baseball games and 47,500 for concerts. Chano lost this one. Nakamura is going to get it unassisted. Golden Glover, as previously mentioned. 
Soft liner by Cheno. Akira says, yoink. Uh, you have a clarification, Mike, for your comment for under 200 bucks. That's for four people? That was for four people, yeah. That included and, food and uh, replica jersey child size. Yeah, the, uh, the food definitely was more frugal in Japan. Like edamame carton for three bucks, karage for six. There's that slow curve, high for ball one. Bondo and Yamasaki now in a comp Bondo and Yamasaki now in a competition for who's got the slower curveball. Mooney grounded out to second his first time up. Fastball, strike one. There's a good frame job by Kai. He's been working on his pitch framing compared to his previous seasons. He's known more as a if you look at the 20 to 80 grading scale, he's got like maybe 40, ca 50 catcher ability, 80 arm. Kai's famous for having a pop time, average pop time, under two seconds. Mune will watch a fork ball low. I'm just glad we haven't quite gotten into the same conversation we had, what was it, last month? On hot dogs, um, way too many. Some of them. Yeah, way too many them. mentions of glizzies. Mune straight back through the middle, base hit, first base runner and first hit for the Buffaloes. So the perfecto bid is over for Bando. That was a beautiful camera angle too. You see the fork ball grip, and that's just clean through the middle. Makes me glad we don't have 3D TVs because I would think that was coming right at me. Uh, Eugene, I went to a Giants game and paid $15 for a churro, and the churro was stale. So that's my experience with San Francisco Giants. Keita Nakagawa up now. Another strikeout victim of Bando. Six home runs on the season, 321 batting average. Games in the other league are starting to get underway, but we can't mention them on the out-of-town scoreboard, only if they show up on the score bug here. Looks like we have a very nice number of people watching. Thank you all for joining us. Bondo misses the relay throw back from the umpire. Bondo waits for the sign from Kai. Like I said, watch for Kai to throw up base runners. Mune's not exactly fast. Hi, ball two. I think we might have a quick confab. Oh, no, Kai just wants to make sure he doesn't airmail the throw. See that pitch count for Bondo? 50 pitches now here in the top of the fourth. Four Ks. Only the one hit, no walks. Mars looking to get in the game at the Sky Dome. Ah yes, the famous Looney Dog Night. I have not attended one of those. I, uh, I admire my digestive system too much for that. A dose of Buckley. Hey, that's a familiar name. Dude, I used to watch your stuff all the time. Wait, Good to have you in the Buckley chat. Here? Oh, yeah. Bag Buckley. it and tag it, my man. Buckley, if you want to talk Japanese baseball cards, I got to get in contact with you somehow. We can talk about those for hours. Yeah, they are definitely popular in Japan. Uh, BBM and Calbi, two of the main if you want manufacturers. Some, wait, I think Buckley's... I, I can find a way to send you some. I have one Japanese baseball card given to me by a friend for winning a trivia contest. It's Koji Uehara. Nice. Yeah, back when he was with the uh, Yomiuri Giants. 2-1 on the way to Keita Nakagawa from Bando. Forkball low. Count is 3-1. and one. 
the best set they have is called Time Travel. They haven't put down a couple of years, but they make it look like an old Calby card from the 70s. And you get all the old players' autographs on there. The one box I got uh, in 2019 had two Lotte autographs in there, and you're only supposed to get one autograph per box. So that was uh, kind of exciting. High and inside, Nakagawa draws the walk. And now the Buffaloes finally have some traffic on the base paths, and right in front of this meat of the order that is so dangerous for them. Mori, Tongu, and Sugimoto. Uh, Quick Buckley, if you get a notification, I just followed you on Twitter. Let me DM you. Sorry. Hey, it's all good, man. I mean, it's nice to have a mutual fandom going on. This is like the biggest YouTube celebrity we've had in these chats. See, we're relevant. I'm hip. I'm with it. Taka 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 taka. Ha! <laughs> Mike Myers is gonna come to my house. <laughs> the DMCA lords are on their way. Ah. Anyways, Tomoyamori DHing today. Talk about an awards cabinet. How's this sound? 2019 Pacific League MVP, three time best nine, five time all star, two time best battery as a catcher. Two-time All-Star MVP. Oh, and one silver with the under-18 team in the 2013 Baseball World Cup in Taichung, Chinese Taipei. Bondo's going to get a few more batters here. Fastball in the dirt, low, ball one. And now you hear the specific chant or chance theme for Modi. The, uh, if you're new to NPB, teams will have specific themes for chances for RBIs. They call RBIs Taimuri over there for timely hits. And sometimes specific players will get their own unique chance theme. One of my favorites is Masataka Yoshida's, but we're not going to hear his for the next five years. Thanks, Boston. Why do I keep ragging on the Boston Red Sox? I don't know. Yeah, you seem to got that thing with them, man. It's called I'm a Toronto Blue Jays fan, dude. <laughs> BKM Hang saying, first started watching MPB highlights from the U.S. when Uehara and Yoshinobu Takahashi were breaking into the league. I was actually just chatting with uh, Mike and our producer earlier today. Ooh, big cut by Muddy. Swing and a miss. Fork ball in the zone, but fooled him. There's that deep fork ball grip. Just under it. I love that pitching or the batting stance of Muddy. I was just chatting with them earlier about the 1994 Japan series, which is the last time there's been any real English broadcasting of NPB in North America. Because the World Series got canceled in 94, the Japan series was effectively the highest level of competition. Skied into left, Yanagi Machi on the track makes the grab. Good throw into third, runner does not advance. Mori gave that one a ride, but it met with a great wall of Pepe Dome. That series was aired on, I think, TBS, on tape delay with English commentary. But as far as I know, no one has a copy of it. It is, as far as I know, lost media. It's sitting on a shelf somewhere on whatever network it was on, probably. Yeah, decaying VHS tape. Oh my god. I watched a clip from 1975 of NPB, and it was crystal clear. And then I try to watch a game from the, like, 2000s, and it looks like it was filmed with, like, a battery acid dissolved piece of film. Makes no sense. So Yumatongu up for his second at bat. Grounded out to the first baseman, Akira Nakamura, last time up. Oh yeah, KBO on ESPN during the uh, early pandemic. Looks like we got some love for Pawapudo in the chat. I have uh, my thought on that, but I'm going to hold that until we get to the middle of the inning. 
Tongu putting his 403 batting average on the line here. That's a lot of red in the heat map. Buffalo's fans in left field trying to will an RBI here to Tongu. Cutter in there, strike one. A friend of mine tried to get on that uh, ESPN KBO broadcast as one of their guests. He really tried and they never responded because uh, one of the teams, he was on their screen as their first foreign fan. They, they put out like a search party to try and find him so they could interview him. I've seen a, I actually saw like an LG Twins hat wandering around here in Toronto during the early pandemic. They got fans here. Me personally, if you ever see a guy in Toronto wearing an Orcs Buffalo's cap, it's me. Say hi. There's a surprising number of Canadian NPB fans. You got Baseball Underrated on Twitter, who's an Eagles fan. You've got uh, one other fan I know who lives here in Toronto who's a Lions fan. A couple Lions fans here in Toronto, actually. And then, of course, Jimbo Bernicki, our other podcast, and Baseball for Breakfast host, who lives in Montreal. Can I be Some... an honorary Canadian? Well, that depends. How's your hosiery? Eh? I got Tim Horton's uh, K-Cups the other day. They're on sale. You can send me to jail for that. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Three and one count from Bando. Struggling a little bit here in the fourth inning. Again, he started out as a reliever, moving into the rotation last year. And there's no love lost between these two teams. Not only do they have the special Kansai Classic series in Osaka when the Hawks visit the Buffaloes, they were down to the wire in the pennant race last season with the Buffaloes winning on a tiebreaker in the last game of the season and then beating them in the Climax series. Tongu gives this one a ride, but that's into the expensive seats. That's close to where I was sitting when I was at Pepe Dome. Broadcasting remote really tricks you when you see that uh, swing and then just standing there like that. Yeah, that is the one downside. And unfortunately, my next trip to Japan will be during the postseason. And my fiance has told me, no, you're not getting to broadcast a game. Maybe we get to watch one, but not going to be on the call for it. <laughs> Edwin saying he's got a hat of the Giants somewhere here a while ago. I have uh, posted on Twitter my hat rack. I have a hat from every single NPB team. Forkball low and the sacks are loaded. We're going to have a confab on the mound. Hiroshi Fujimoto, the manager of the Hawks. No action yet to pull him. So it looks like this is just going to be a chit chat. Try and give Bondo the uh, extra shot of juice he needs to wrap up this inning. Sugimoto, the man they nickname Rao. Fist of the North Star reference, not only for his stature, but also for his home run pose with a single fist raised skyward coming to the plate. You should see his video uh, that they play at Kyoseri Dome when he walks up to the plate. He's actually dressed up as Rao in the video. Interesting thing, Sugimoto and Masataka Yoshida were drafted in the same year in the same draft, but Sugimoto has definitely been the late bloomer, late bloomer compared to Yoshida, who, of course, has been posted and now plays for the Boston Red Sox. You see someone still got their macho dumbbells from last season. Was Sugimoto drifted out of college? or Because he's, he's older than uh, Yoshida. I think he was. Huh. But yeah, led the Pacific League in home runs in 2021, which was his first All-Star and Best Nine nomination, and won Japan Series MVP. And here he's going to pick up the first runs of the game. One run will score. Yanagi Machi will collect it. Kai waits for the relay. Not in time. Two RBI single. For Yutaro Sugimoto, the Buffaloes barge through 2 0 Oryx here in the top of the fourth. And yeah, 2022 Japan Series MVP when the Buffaloes beat the Swallows in seven. With timely hitting like that. 
Kotaro Kudebayashi, this is his third season with the Buffaloes. Regular member of the Top 20 Plays Highlight Reels, which will be restarting. We had to take a break due to Interleague. But we'll be starting up again. And you'll hear my dulcet tones narrating the best plays that the Pacific League has. When in doubt, look for the ENG tag. Bondo floats in a curveball outside, ball one. And you'll hear either myself, Jimbo, or Mike with varying levels of inanity. Runners are first and second with two down now for Kotaro Kurebayashi. You have to wonder if fatigue may be factoring in. Bondo's nearing a season high for pitch count. 1-0 on the way. Fastball outside ball two. I think the message may have been from the coaching staff. This is your last guy. Get him or get out. <laughs> I mean, it's not like the Hawks don't have a dynamo bullpen. If this game gets into the late innings with the Hawks leading, you're going to see the back-to-back -back Latin combo of Livan Moinello and Roberto Osuna. Two of the best relievers in NPB right now. Sachi Yamasaki waits on deck to enter the game in the bottom of the fourth. A distinctly Japanese thing is having the pitcher start to get loose with two outs in the inning. Just throwing some light toss from in front of the dugout. The Hawks tend to be pretty good with foreign uh, relievers. Swing and a miss, strike two. Kurebayashi goes fishing on a cutter. I mean, you have to look at no further than the Pacific League and NPB saves record holder for a single season, Dennis Sarfate. Also, Brian Falkenborg, uh, Brian Wolf. The Hawks also have that Cuban development pi pipeline with Yurisbel Gracial, Alfredo Despine, chopped into center field. That's going to be played on a hop. Makihara brings it into Imamiya with a relay. Not in time to stop the run. Tongu charges in from second. 3-0 Buffaloes now. Still can't believe we got uh, Sarfate to record a outro for us that one time. That one time in his farewell video. We got a compilation of all of his uh, best strikeouts, including a blink and you'll miss a cameo from Shohei Otani. Hey, Jim Lapap, we were just talking about you. We were mentioning how we did the Making the Pitch interview, and you mentioned Akira Nakamura was your favorite player. I remember in that story, he said he lived like five or ten minutes away, bike ride from uh, where the Hawks played as a kid. Gonzalez would love to get that double-digit home run here. It's always a question mark whether or not guys coming from the majors will rake in Japan. Gonzalez seems to be hanging around, and again, that positional versatility definitely helps. Of course, Gonzalez won the World Series in 2017 with the Houston Astros. I feel like I've been saying it a lot, but like you hear about the ones that, you know, do hit well. You don't hear about the five million that get released midseason. Or get acquired midseason, like Leandro Cedeno just did for the uh Orcs Buffaloes. Or just Rounded up to Nakamura, he plays it, that's fair, and that will end the top of the fourth, stemming the bleeding. But the Buffaloes charge into the lead. 3-0 Oryx as we head to the bottom of the fourth. And now finally, the answer to your trivia question, if you don't remember what it was, who was the single season letter in strikeouts as a batter for the Hawks across their entire history? And the answer is Takuya Kai. In 2021, he had 142 strikeouts. 
but they keep him around because he's a defensive stud. How does six straight Golden Gloves for each of the last six years sound? I actually figured it would be Nomura or uh, maybe Yanagita. Yeah, I was thinking Yanagita, to be honest. But, I mean, Yanagita is also one of the best players in NPB history. If you ever get a chance, there's some amazing books out there you can uh, read up on for the history of uh, foreigners coming to Japan. You Gotta Have Wa by Robert Whiting, who also ghost wrote a book with Warren Cromartie called Slugging It Out in Japan. And uh, I noticed there was some chatting earlier. Blossom Mirage mentioning Pawapudo along with uh, Koyomi, Mi Koyomi Matic. I want to give a hearty bonsai and congratulations to Shoma Mori, a.k.a. Shoda, who won gold in the baseball event at the Olympic eSports Series yesterday in Singapore. He defeated his countryman, Hiroki Horiike, in the finals. Representatives in the semifinals, also from Chinese Taipei and the United States. And a good friend of mine, Robert Tomlinson, on the call for those games. And you can check out the video on demand for that on the Olympics YouTube channel. And remember, Power, the Power Pro's English release is available on Switch and the PlayStation Store for only 99 cents. I've played it. I stink at it. I still have fun. This is not an advertisement or sponsorship. This is just me waxing about a game that I enjoy. Shortstop Kenta Imamiya leading off the bottom of the fourth. Six-time All-Star, three-time Best Nine, including last year. Five Golden Gloves in a row from 2013 to 2017. Six Japan Series rings. In the hole quickly, 0-2. Makihara also notable as the NPB record holder, or sorry, the Pacific League record holder for most career sacrifice bunts. He picked up the record on April 8th, 2021. Fastball sailed high, ball one. Mars asking, have I ever done a straight calling of the game? I think like maybe 2022 was the closest thing I've come to a straight game call. You know, I'm taking some pages from other watch-alongs, like uh, before he left uh, Roger Sportsnet, Steve Dangle Glynn did a bunch of watch a game with Steve Dangle. I got to chat with folks and call the game. Swing and a miss, strike three. Imamiya, another victim of Sachiya Yamasaki, who is having himself a game so far. Stake to a 3-0 lead. In addition to his international career, Kondo also has three All-Stars and three Best Nine awards. He also started his career as a catcher and played some third base, but now he's getting renowned as a Golden Glover in the outfield. You saw him with the Fighters back in 2022 in the top 20 plays. Now you'll see him with the Hawks for this and the next seven years. Six years, sorry. Mars, I am not that experienced on the play-by-play -play call to really do a proper thing. I can only stand so much Buck Martinez before I mute the TV. <laughs> 1-1 one, one on the way from Yamasaki. In there, strike two. I would also like to add that a lot of the uh, professional broadcasts, they have people feeding them information nonstop. So it's kind of hard to do straight play-by-play -play when you got to look up everything yourself. This is true, and you're not at the ballpark. We, yeah, we don't, have, we don't have much of a staff. It's our producer and us. Kotsky can't draw the call there high for ball two. Kondo is one of the people who have taken advantage of Hukuka SoftBank's uh, well-known spending $50 million over seven years to play in Fukuoka. Chopped towards shortstop Kurebayashi on a hop. Two down. 
Well, Blossom Mirage, it is impressive uh, that you only noticed us now. Thank you for joining us. And if you want to watch more of our broadcasts, starting this season, we have actually been able to retain all of our live streams. Back in 2022, we didn't have permission. This year, we do! So you'll be able to watch all of our midnight matinees and baseball for breakfast, including our first ever interleague baseball for breakfast broadcast on this here YouTube channel. Just flip your live tab over to the archive side. And if we're talking about awards cabinets, Inagita definitely has the biggest of the bunch. Let's see if I can finish them all before the set bat ends. Eight time all-star, two time Pacific League MVP, swing and a miss. Six rings with this dynasty, four Japan Series MVPs, eight best nines, six Golden Gloves, two batting championships, two interleague MVPs, and eight All-Star Awards. Although he declined the invite to the WBC roster, swing and a miss strike two, he did win Olympic gold with a 2020 plus one club. He also signed a seven-year deal in the 2019-2020 offseason that will take him through to retirement. And I have a hunch that will get number nine raised to the rafters once this season is over. Ooh, Yamasaki tried to sell that one. So did Wakatsuki. That was called a ball. Low and away. Look at how low Wakatsuki gets in his crouch. Wakatsuki, uh, so Yamasaki's like, yes, time to work on my lunges, yes. Fifty pitches so far, five Ks, just the one double to this man, Yuki Anagita. That'll be flared into the foul seats. Yanagita also an impressive prospect because he started off as a development player. For those of you who aren't familiar with NPB, players can be drafted through the regular draft and assigned to the 70-man organization limit, or drafted as a de developmental player who doesn't count towards that. They then have three years to either be released or registered as a regular player. Kudabayashi will grab this soft line drive. That will end the bottom of the fourth. Buffalo's hold serve through four innings. 3 nothing Oryx here on the midnight matinee. one ten Eastern, so hello folks in Central Time. It's a midnight matinee for you as well. And as we head to the top of the fifth, another trivia question for you. I'll rag on the other team, uh, Oryx, right now for a bit. Who is the all-time single-season leader in double pay, double plays grounded into? Your hint is he is also the team leader in double plays grounded into. Mars with a question. Are the colored shapes the pitcher's arsenal in the score bug? Yes, that is correct. So if you can read Katakana, you can decipher what each of those pitches are. I mean, you have to fudge it a little bit because... Japanese doesn't really do consecutive consonants. Instead of a curve, it's a kabu. Or instead of a fork, it's a foku. But once you... I, I have honestly say, I have to say, learning hiragana and katakana have improved my enjoyment of Japanese broadcasts so, so much. Highly recommended. Or you can just listen to the podcast available on this here YouTube channel, and you'll be able to pick up How to Speak Pacific League from me. You got it, Blossom Mirage. A fastball is straight, or sutoreto. <laughs> All right, Mars, that's fair enough. As we linger on Sachi Yamasaki, who continues to hold the 3 nothing lead, interesting tidbit I spotted earlier on Twitter. As of June 20th, so five days ago, the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks are 10, 18, and 1 when they allow the first run. The Buffaloes are 26, 7, and 2 when they score the first run. 
High fork ball for ball one. PKM Hang asking, have they started find, referring to some sliders as sweepers? No, mostly because most guys don't throw that horizontal sweeping action. Most of the sliders we're seeing are very much vertical ones. Feels like I woke up one day and all of a sudden there was a sweeper pitch. Foolish Baseball has an excellent video on that. Makotsky will send this one soaring. Yanagita tells Makihara, nah, I got this. One away. <laughs> Chano picked up a multi-hit game for the first time in seven starts yesterday. Good to see that the rookie is starting to turn things around. He had an excellent start to his Oryx career, but has quieted down just a little bit. We are seeing some more of Yuya Oda in the outfield as a result. Fastball pumped in for a strike. One other thing you'll see in uh, NPB is players getting called up and sent down to the minors a lot more frequently. In part because once you're on the 70-man organizational roster, you don't have to worry about options or anything. You can get yo-yoed between the top and bottom and uh, second tier team as often as needed. This is grounded through the right side for a base hit. Yanagite will pick it up. Chano with a one-out single. So, that means that as, as long as 10 days pass, you can get sent down and called up as often as your team needs you. This was uh, made hay of when a certain pitcher for the Yokohama DNA Bay Stars uh, caught some flack for being sent down to the minors, but it really was just to keep his spot in the rotation. Yumamune, one for two today. Ah, uh, Jim Lapap with the translation guide. Thank you so much, Jim. But you'll see some teams yo-yo foreign players up and down because you do have that four foreign player hard cap on your club. Only once you've accumulated nine years of NPB service time do you get considered a domestic player. And only a handful of players have ever gotten to that limit. One of whom, Alfredo Despine, just recently re-signed with the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. Mune watches a fastball in, strike one. He's the most recent. Uh, before that, it was uh, Vladimir Ballantine, I think. I think he might have been. Yeah, oh, another Paul's. SoftBank Hawk, too. Oh. Now we're back. Apologies for the uh, brief interruption. I was half expecting to hear a boo boo noise or something. Pitch inside. Cutter missing. Ball one. Yuma Mune is an interesting case. He started his career as an outfielder, but thanks to the Australian Baseball League, converted to third base, where he's won a Golden Glove now. Actually picked up back-to-back uh, -back best nine and Golden Gloves at third, as well as his first All-Star nod last season. Because the Australian Baseball League takes place during the Japanese winter and ours, Makes it easy for players to go over and get some extra playtime in, including his now teammate, Tomo Yamori. Other long-term foreign players, uh, one of whom is an Oryx franchise legend, Tuffy Rhodes. He belongs in the Hall of Fame, that's all I'm going to say. I think his 440-something home runs are the most by a foreign player in NPB. Off and running, there's the Kai Cannon, but the throw skirts away into center field. Makihata backing up the play. Stolen base, Chano. That is a rarity. Normally, Yumamune is able to get that. There you see the pop time. Looks like we have a slight cannon misfire, unless Namuda missed the catch. Oh, it just bounced short. Tough, tough play there. Mm -hmm. 
That would be Tokumasa Chano's seventh stolen base of his season. Seven for 12 on the base paths. Fastball high, ball three. I'm trying to think of other long-term foreign players. Uh, Warren Cromartie won a Japan series and was arguably one of the best players to come over to Japan from the majors because he did so in his prime. But I don't think he ever quite got to the uh, top tier and got domestic free agency status. Dennis Sarfate, I think, did. Uh, he was a bit short due to injury. Ah, right. Uh, yeah. Randy Messenger did get Randy domestic. Messenger, yeah. They did yep. a t-shirt campaign for him, but uh, injuries caught up with him. So Mune draws the walk, and with runners on first and second with one out, I think that'll be the end of the day for Hugo Bondo. Alex Guerrero, he got uh, domestic rights. And you want to talk about a foreign batter. The arms on that guy are like tree trunks. There was that uh, Oryx uh, lineup. I think it was 0-9. They had, I think, three to four foreign batters because two of them didn't count. And then you contrast that to the 2022 Japan Series champion Oryx Buffaloes, who won without a single foreign batter in their lineup. As for uh, recent, um, I thought Scott Matheson was going to get there, and then he just up and retired. Hey, he came back for the WBC. And the Olympics, yeah, he seems to be still going internationally. I've talked to him before, he's a pretty cool guy. Oh, you're correct, uh, BCAM Hang. Le Leon and Leron Lee, both of them played in the Pacific League and got major plaudits. I think they won a Japan series with uh, the Lotte Orions as well. They even released a single on YouTube. Ugh. Or uh, on, on like 45 that I think their granddaughters wound up animating. Go take a look for Baseball Boogie. There's the final line for Hugo Bondo. Four and a third innings, 83 pitches thrown, four strikeouts, three walks, three earned runs on four hits. Good first three innings. But I think fatigue caught up with him. I think that's his longest outing of the season. He's responsible for the two runners on base right now. Well, yeah, Randy Bass. Oh, of course. How could I forget? Alex Ramirez. Yeah, Ramichan. Got domestic free agency. The only foreign player to accumulate 2,000 NPB hits. And briefly manage the base stars for a few seasons. There was a time when they really liked having their uh, foreign players uh, release singles. Uh, Animal Leslie had a single. Yes, and if you've ever watched uh, MXC or Takeshi's Castle, Leslie makes a cameo. And I notice a few people commenting on uh, Mr. Baseball references. Leslie's in that as well. He's the, the Giants pitcher who choke slams a Chunichi Dragon. He only played for like... Two, two or years. three seasons, yeah. yeah. And then he two. took up acting and was really good at it. Yeah, and he's, people still bring him up. New pitcher into the game before the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. Shota Takeda. Fastball, curveball. He had an injury last season in August. Spent the rest of the season in the minors trying to rehab. 30-year-old joined uh, the Hawks. Out of the first year draft, first round in 2011, he's been with the club since for 12 seasons, and as a result, has quite a few rings on his hands. Nakagawa watches fastball in, strike one. I think Leon Lee also cameoed in uh, Mr. Baseball and even consulted on the, vi the film. I know that the uh, NPB subreddit, shout out Tensai Baka and those guys, uh, they also have a ritual of, before NPB opening day, watching Mr. Baseball. Yeah, I saw I think it, it once. I thought it was okay. I know it's still accurate for uh, what players have to deal with. I've definitely quoted the game can't end in a blank blank tie a couple times. Fastball inside. Count is 2-1. We're going to do an out-of-town scoreboard update with the other games going on in the Pacific League at the conclusion of this inning. Oh, 
I gotta check. Did that uh, Angels Rockies game end? Twenty-five to one. Oh my lord! They didn't get the shutout. Nope, and Otani only went one for seven. That had a chance to be historical. That could have been the second largest margin for a shutout victory in MLB history. Yeah, my my preseason ritual used to be watching Ken Burns' baseball documentary, but that's now a, what, 30 hours commitment? I can't do that. You're right, Pete Neems. Frank Thomas with an unnamed or uncredited cameo in a Yankees uniform. 3-1 on the way. High, ball four. Bases full of Buffaloes here in the top of the fifth. And now, to answer the question everyone's probably wondering, do the fans in the outfield cheering sections ever get tired? No. No, they do not. That's what the, the other half of the inning is for. Cheering in Japan is very positive. It, you cheer your team. You very, very rarely cheer, jeer the opposition. And even then, it's only like certain fan bases who have a bit of a reputation. Chano at third, Mune at second, Nakagawa at first, Tomoyamori batting here with the bases loaded. Deep fly ball to left, ground out to third so far today. So the Orcs Buffaloes fans right now are cheering because it's the top half of the inning. They will go quiet for the bottom half of the inning because that's when the Hawks fans in the right field stands are going to cheer. Also, be careful on which side of the ballpark you're sitting on if you're going to a Pacific League ballpark. For the Eagles, the Fighters, and the Lions, the arrangement is flipped. The home fans get the left field section and the visitors get right field. Modi trying to avoid the double play. Takeda just trying to get out of the inning. Change up high. Ball two. Uh, Mars asking, do MPP games see healthy amounts of fans from both teams? Oh, absolutely. Because the nation is so compact, you easily will have traveling fans. Heck, you'll even see fans, the local fan club show up. I think we talked about this on the podcast in relation to uh, teams relocating. Called strike one. The, uh, because the Hawks started their existence in Osaka, you'll often see Osakan Hawks fans in the visitor section at Kyoseta Dome when they play the Buffaloes. Like, they still le live there. They never left. Ditto for the fighters who used to play in Tokyo Dome before decamping to Hokkaido. There's a healthy contingent of fighters fans, and they even play a few home games at Tokyo Dome as a sop to uh, the fans who are still there. Good question from Munzerism Diggerism for which the biggest NPV run differential. I gotta look that up. Ooh, that's a good point, uh, Jim Lapbap. 29 to 1. I think that may be it. So in relation to that Angels game from earlier, mm -hmm. the Angels beat the Rockies and then traded with them. Really? <laughs> Apparently they're getting Mike Moustakis from the Rockies after just beating them up like that. We have humbled your ownership, and we have heard the lamentations of your women. We want our prize. They demand tribute. Check swing. He did go around, so that's a strike three for Modi. That's one thing that NPB does really well, even though there's only 12 teams and... For the longest time, most of them were concentrated in Tokyo and Osaka. They do countryside games where they will have an alternate ballpark in the, the team's territory. 
as a way to draw more fans into the ballpark. So, for example, the Hawks will tour around Kyushu. The Buffaloes will swing into Kobe and a few other places. The Carp will take over most of the Chugoku region. The Swallows will visit Niigata. The Eagles will visit the rest of Tohoku. And, of course, the Fighters all over Hokkaido. Foul to the backstop. That's another distinctly Japanese ballpark trait. The massive backstop littered with advertisements. If I could read them, I'd probably be upset. Hey, I spot a Kintetsu Buffalo jerseys somewhere in the crowd. Matongu skies this one that was an interesting sound of disgust you know Hagimachi waits for it to stop scraping the dome roof and that ends the top of the fifth the bases are stranded full of buffaloes Takeda gets Bondo out of the jam halfway home buffaloes lead 3-0 Out of town scoreboard update, other games going on. The Cebu Lions are putting a scorcher on the Rakuten Eagles at the moment. 5-0 in the fourth, top of the fourth. Takahisa Hayakawa having a bit of a rough go. And, and the over at, to your trivia oh, sorry. And over in Zozo Marine Stadium, Katsuya Kakunaka with his second home run of the season. The ageless wonder for the Chibolote Marines has staked them to a 3-0 lead over the Hokkaido de Ponham Fighters. Bottom of second. And the answer to your trivia question, who leads the Oryx Buffaloes in double plays grounded into in a single season is Boomer Wells. Again, with the Hockey Braves. There, there's an all-time team leader in it as well. There's a YouTube channel that has old Japanese commercials with ex-MLB players. Randy Bass shaving his uh, beard off for Gillette. Yeah. Uh, Boomer Wells getting plunked by a number of pitches in the ballpark and then running to a pharmacy for uh, pastime uh, medication. Right patches. Yeah. My favorite's uh, And he says, honk you very much. Yeah. My favorite, Sadaharu Os tries to sell you a TV. That's the video title. Okay, no, my favorite is still Brad Leslie screaming at you about uh, Japan Post discount rates. <laughs> and headbutting the poor postman. In the, uh, the O video, he has a talking chow chow. I remember there used to be a website called Japandering that covered all the, the videos that North American... Uh, movie stars and television stars would go and do in Japan hoping that they would never see the light of day stateside and then the internet happened and that stopped happening then you got guys like Tommy Lee Jones who uh, even now they're still doing it well really I mean Lost in Translation Buffy. was in, intended uh, as an homage to reality I mean uh, you're not seeing Sean Connery sell yogurt with a talking mascot. Grounded to shortstop, Kudebayashi picks it up. One away here. Or uh, Nicolas Cage shilling for Pachinko. Arnold Schwarzenegger coming out of a vitamin vial as a genie. Or my absolute favorite, Hulk Hogan selling you an air conditioner, singing a nursery rhyme. Oh, that one? That one. It's Sunday comes again. That one. And Sunday's come again here. For those of you just joining us, hello, Gabe Lerman here in the booth with Mike Beely. This is the Midnight Matinee on the Pacific League English YouTube channel. And if you're watching it somewhere else, how dare you? Byoya Kurihara up for the third time today. Kurihara, four-time Japan Series champion, 2020 Japan Series MVP, one-time All-Star, and a member of the 2020 Olympics championship team. That's going to be a dome scraper. We'll leave the infield. Good question. Kudebayashi says, yoink. <laughs> K 
Kurihara had a rough go last season, tore his left ACL and injured his left lateral meniscus, which took him out of the lineup for a substantial chunk of it. It's been so good to see him back in the lineup for the Hawks. Then again, that's how Tatsuru Yanagimachi got as much playtime and left as he did. Sami Nomura squares to bunt. That's up the first base line. That is... Oh my goodness, what a collision. Nomura bowls over Tongu. He holds on to the ball, so that at least gets the out, but... Yikes. Shaken up is everyone. Gonna have a quick concussion check there. Tries to drag bunt Isami Nomura. That's staying fair. Tongu has his head down and knee on thigh contact. Looks like nobody's head hits the ground. So mercifully, all the points of contact are not cranial. Out recorded. Tongu is okay. Unless that was a foul ball, in which case we got to do that all over again. Oh, Lord. Yep, that was a foul ball. First base umpire says, again. So, slightly shaken up. Isami Nomura now facing an 0-1 count. Second time at bat today. Struck out his first appearance. 3 for 10 on the young season. Oh, one on the way. Fastball high. Change up in there for strike two. Yamasaki is a member of what I like to call the mountain range of the uh, Oryx rotation because you got Yoshinobu Yamamoto, Taisuke Yamaoka, who started yesterday's game, Yamazaki, ooh, and that one plunks Isami Nomura. Isami's having a bit of a rough day. He will take his base. You may see him pinch run with Ukyo Shuto. Let's see where that one connects. Right on the rump. That's going to leave a welt. See Yamazaki's reaction. Wincing in pain. Tip of the cap to say, sorry about that. So Yanagimachi will get his at bat. And the fourth Yama in the. Buffalo's rotation, Shunpeita Yamashita, who featured as the starting pitcher on the most recent baseball for breakfast. Right back up the middle, Sachi Yamasaki! Good morning and good night. Well, that was quick. That doesn't get your heart racing, I don't know what will. Through five, Buffalo's stake to a 3 0 lead here in the midnight matinee. Now is a good time as any to uh, make sure you have refreshed your beverage as we let the cheerleaders do their thing. I'm going to go refill my water. Is the band named Time Machine or is the band named Penicillin? I guess they're in Penicillin. Once again, if you're in the chat, drop a comment saying where you're watching from. Or don't, I can't stop you. Someone from California. I spend uh, quite a lot of time in Modesto visiting friends. Atlanta. I don't talk to Braves fans. <laughs> Continuing on. K 
Columbia. I think Columbia might be a new one for the for our geotag. We got someone here from Toronto. How's it going, eh? Oh no. St. Louis. I love this little mid-game highlight reel. It's another distinctly Japanese thing that we have to try and fill time and talk over. Again, great time to get up, stretch, refresh your beverage. Well, uh, have you seen that uh, old Korean commercial featuring uh, Hunjin Ryu? For uh, Shin Ramyun. Where he's uh, eating ramen with the uh, fake Dodgers players. No, can't say I have. Just look it up. They have a fake Clinton Kershaw in it. <laughs> it's a guy with like a paper mache beard as they cheer him on eating ramen. I'm sorry, no ramen commercials can compare to the one for Nissan Black Ramen. Which just goes full heavy metal bonkers. Ah, uh, there's one Hyunjin Ryu screaming change up and then throwing change ups of ramen packs. There you go. Well, there's the out of town scoreboard update for the other league. Scoreless over in Yokohama. Scoreless in. Oh, sorry, I think that might be Koshien. Scoreless at the Vantolin Dome. No, it is Yokohama. And 3-1 uh, fish over tall people at Mazda Zoom Zoom in Hiroshima. Yeah, you were mentioning Boss, boss Coffee? Yeah, he's got a hat. Have you seen that uh, Samurai Japan DVD that they're coming out with? I have not. I know that a uh, few people on uh, Twitter have made their reviews of it. I kind of want to get it just because it seems like it goes, has a lot of cool behind-the-scenes stuff on it. Well, I know that uh, Yuki Utagawa credited Yu Darvish and uh, Buffalo's manager Satoshi Nakajima for helping him with his mental health earlier this season. Well, BKM Hang, that there's a reason why uh, the stadium's called Mazda Zoom Zoom. Hold up. Sugimoto flares to left center. Makihara makes the grab one away. And that's because the Matsuda family where Mazda gets its name, own, is the majority, or sorry, the plurality owner of the carp. Not the majority owner, though. Nor the sole owner. The carp are actually the only team in NPB not corporate owned, and it's the family, the Matsudas, who own it. That's also why their road jersey says Hiroshima instead of a corporate sponsor. It's also why I have... Oh, that's into the exciting seats. Got your helmet, folks. That's also why I can't slag on any uh, major league team who wants to put uh, jersey advertising on. My favorite team has the name of a financial services company on its road jersey, as you see right there. I got nothing to complain about. As long as it's not a crypto ad. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. Like all the uh, umpires who were advert... Advertising FTX. <laughs> True. It can always be worse. It can always get worse. Well, uh, Toyo is the historical name for the Mazda organization. As Kudebayashi gets aboard for the second time today. Good game for Kotaro. That'll set the table for Marvin Gonzalez. I do wonder if the uh, MLB scout who was spotted at Pepe Dome earlier this series is sticking around to watch who else is in this game. Yoshinobu Yamamoto was the primary target, but he scuffled a little bit in his six innings on Friday. I do wonder if the Red Sox are scouting YY, the possible reunion with his old Orcs Buffalo's teammate Masataka Yoshida is in the cards. Yamamoto has requested to be posted this offseason, 
And with a Japan Series ring, back-to-back -back AEG Sawamuda awards, and back-to-back -back Pacific League MVP awards, there's uh, really very little else for him to do here in NPB. He does that stand. That may be true, but if I'm Oryx, I'm saying no to that one. That's going to be sailing out of play. Strike two. Gonzalez has 107 MLB home runs and 415 runs batted in to go with a 252 batting average. Across the Astros, Twins, Red Sox, Astros again, and the Yankees. Takeda deals. That's in the dirt. Kai comes out. One and two right now. Takeda is going to be the long man here, piggybacking off Hugo Bando, today's starter. Takeda was actually born in Miyazaki Prefecture, so this is technically his local team. Through last season, nine holds, two saves, primarily a starter, 65 and 46 record with 820 strikeouts. Six-time Japan Series champion, and one-time All-Star, also Pacific League Rookie of the Year in 2012. I think they're chanting Gonzo. Talk it up. Waits on the sign. Long convo with Kai. Looks like we may have to have a... Uh, Confab or just reset everything. Oh, our producer can confirming that's Ma Go, as in contraction of Marwin Gonzalez. A little hard to hear from not in the stadium. Thank you, producer. The nameless producer behind the scenes. Pay no attention to the man behind the screen. 2-2 on the way from Takeda. Gonzalez will send this one out of play. Ah, that's fair point, Koyomi Matic. Well, add gas may be more like step on the gas. Gonzalez waits on the 2-2 coming from Takeda. Swing and a miss, strike three. Chicks the high heat out of the zone. Now, if you want to join in with some of these chants, it's worth pointing out that some teams and their fan clubs have videos online where you, they will run through their rehearsals and give you lyrics on screen albeit in Japanese to sing along with the deep red bulls of the buffaloes are one of those fan clubs Wakatsuki 0 and 2 today strike out and a fly out but again you're not looking at Wakatsuki for his offense you're, you've got it behind the plate because he is one of the best defensive catchers in the league Interestingly enough, a teammate with Tomoya Mori on that 2013 Under-18 World Cup team that won silver in Taichung. So Mars, the fans, the brass and drums used to be fan-run, but the, the uh, used to be entirely fan-run, and heck, they even had competing clubs. Recently, though, teams have started to play a hand in it. 
A good number of the clubs will have the cheers for their players listed on their official website. But it is all fan operated. There's no Buffaloes team representatives out in the Owendon. Those are fans. They just may take output or input from the team. Oh, two ball is outside. Interesting uh, coming set motion from Takeda. Almost like he's have to remind his muscles, this is how you throw a baseball. Swing and a miss, strike three to end the bottom or the top of the sixth. Takeda comes in and does her job. So far, just the one blemish for the Hawks. Bottom of the sixth coming up. Yamazaki will be getting another inning of work. He's been sterling so far for the Orcs Buffaloes. Sounds like some interesting uh, in <laughs> interesting in the uh, arena entertainment. Just the one Yanagi to double so far for the Hawks. Another out of town scoreboard update. Bottom of the fifth, Cebu continues to lead Rakuten five nothing over at Zozo Marine. The fighters have gotten on the board. Three to one now the score, but it's bottom of the third. Gregory Polanco, El Cofe at the bat. Kenya Suzuki and Yuji Nishino, the pitchers in that game. Also interesting to note, the fighters have Ariel Martinez behind the plate. Normally I've seen him as a DH, but understandably you don't see too many foreign catchers in Japan where there's that big honking language barrier. Martinez, formerly a, dra a member of the Dragons, came to the Fighters as a free agent acquisition. Mars, I completely agree with you. That, the uh, everybody clap your hands thing, and other annoying chants, it's really nice to hear actual uh, cheering. BKM Hang mentioning, maybe Ace Drummers can get side gigs in Japan once Fisher leaves. Um... Given that they are basically distinct in uh, the majors by actually having a drum line out there, I'm not sure. I mean, at least it's a shorter flight. They're already on the West Coast. I've always thought about trying to start up a Owen Don in Toronto, but I remember back when I used to go to games frequently, I would bristle at the ushers trying to start cheers, and I'm like, mm, I don't think anyone would be game for it. Kai, that, second at uh... bat of the game. Change up outside, ball one. Uh, Pitchcom has not caught on in Japan yet. <laughs> Pete, that, I can agree with you on that. Uh, so, we mentioned Kai's six consecutive Golden Gloves since the 2017 season. No swing, says the first base up. But he's also got six Japan Series rings, was the 2018 Japan Series MVP, three All-Star nods, three Breast Nines, and also is a member of the uh, International Treble Club along with Kondo, Premier 12, Olympics, and World Baseball Classic. But he also added to that the Asia Professional Baseball Championship in 2017. So he's got one up on his Hawks teammate. Swing and a miss, strike two. Kai takes a seat. So Koyomi Matic, uh, a lot of the East Asian leagues will have the similar setup. So if you watch KBO or the CPBL in Taiwan, you'll notice very similar cheering sections. Low for ball three. And this is my theory on it. I understand that the, it all stems from the roots of the game as an intramural sport at the university level. The Tokyo Big Six League actually out, is older by, than the uh, 
MPB by a solid few years. Kai sends one to the wall. Bouncing off the wall is both Chino and the ball. On it quickly is Nakagawa. Takuya Kai. One out double. Kai goes to the opposite field. That could have gone. Chano tries to make it, just mistimes the jump. They say baseball is a game of inches. There's their inches. Or millimeters, because we're in Japan. Uh, so, Will, if you want higher quality than 360p, try changing your browser. I find Firefox gives me issues. Chrome is better for me in that respect. Akira Nakamura, 9 for 20 in his last five games, including the walk-off hit or Sayonara RBI last night. Cutter high in the zone for strike one. So far, both hits have been extra bases, but they've both been stranded. Or, failing that, instead of PLTV, try Watch Dingo if you're located in North America. WatchDingo.com has these games available for free with, albeit no commentary. Look for the Baseball Network. That's in partnership with our good friends over at FTF Sports. As we inch towards midnight in the mountain time zone. Man on second, 1-1 one, one on the way. Slider slides outside, 2-1. Interesting uh, rhythm you got for uh, the the Owendon chant out there. Nakamura chops this up towards second. Gonzalez is on it. Sacrifice hit. Kai advances to third. Well, thank you for the compliment, Mars. We do try to keep things active, and your participation helps us from falling asleep. Two strikeouts on the day so far for Kenta Imamiya, six-time Japan Series champion. All 75 of you tuning in. Thank you so much for making us a part of your Saturday night. Or Sunday morning, as the case may be. I remember we've had a few games where we've had people tune in from Europe. Where it's baseball for breakfast there. Called strike one. Dangerous looking fork ball there. The fork really is a distinctly Japanese pitch. It used to be a lot more popular in the States, but now most pitchers in Japan will include that in their arsenal. Most famously, former Fukuoka SoftBank Hawk Kodai Senga and his ghost fork. Well, BKM Hang 10, uh, I think that's as good of excuse as any to go back to Japan and take in a game. Fastball outside, but Wakatsuki gets the frame job. See previous comment about the value Kenya Wakatsuki brings to the Orcs Buffaloes. I do wonder if we'll see Ukyo Shuto in a pinch hitting, pinch running role. He was, the one, of course, the guy who scored the WBC semifinal winning run off Munetaka Murakami's bat. Chopped. Into the right, Chano squares up. There's the out. Kai thinks about it. That's a better idea. That looked like a good throw. Yamazaki cuts it off. Kai not exactly known for being fleet of foot. I gotta figure out what song uh, Kondo's using for his uh, walk up. Really sounds good. I dig the vibes.
Hey, at least the lions have a dedicated rail line to get right there. You don't have to worry about parking. Kondo chops foul. Good to see Tongu back at first after that nasty looking collision on a foul bunt between him and Isami Nomura. There's the noise. And you'll hear the cheerleader for that section on the uh, megaphone instructing the fans with what cheer to bust out. Yamasaki deals. Change up in there again. Strike two. Okay, let's spam the chat quick. One, if you're a Buffaloes fan. Two, if you're a Hawks fan. Three, if you have no skin in the game and you're just here for the vibes. One for buffs, two for birdies, three for vibes. I'm curious. And a four if you like me in particular. There we go. Bipolar Blossom Mirage. J Cream for buffs. Profit for in here for the Hawks. Pete here for the vibes. Brian here because he's got a bet on the game. Interesting. You'd be watching the Yogurt Birds if the Yogurt Birds had a streaming service. Aw, oh, Mars is here to watch you, man. And so's Blossom Mirage. My greatest allies. Thank you. Sachi Yamasaki gets another deep lunge in, hoping to get the call. Change up low and away, ball one. A lot of people here for the vibes. We appreciate it. Well, hopefully you'll become a fan of one of these two clubs. If this game isn't enough uh, evidence, be sure to watch our Making the Pitch series as Jimbo Bernicki and I interview some of the most dedicated fans in the Anglosphere for each of these clubs, as well as the other four Pacific League teams. It's midnight in the mountain time zone. Two down here in the bottom of the six, Sachi Yamasaki trying to strand that Takuyakai double. Uh, I don't believe Statcast is here. Kondo skies this one. Mune says, I got it. And he does. So once again, a leadoff double is stranded. Sachiya Yamasaki dancing between the raindrops. Hiroshi Fujimoto out to make a pitching change. And all you Buffaloes fans, sing along. It's your theme. It's the lucky seven. I'm going to be singing along on mute, you know. I'm wearing a Hawks jersey, I don't care. Another distinctly Japanese thing. The visiting fans get their own seventh inning stretch in the top of the seventh where their song gets played. Could you imagine the Yankees playing OK Blue Jays in the Bronx? Or the Orioles playing Sweet Caroline at Camden? I also posit that Sky is the best team theme song in NPB. I actually wrote English lyrics to it 
I'm that big of a Buffalo's fan. New pitcher into the game for the SoftBank Hawks. I think that's Tamura. Oh yeah, We Love Marines is a classic. <laughs> Yankees fans just get angry. I want to make sure everyone in the AL West catches strays in this broadcast. <laughs> So we've got the Red Sox, we've got the uh, Orioles, Yankees. You gotta make fun of the Orioles. You gotta make. You still gotta make fun of the Jays. No, no, the everybody. Jays are my club. He and uh, I'd make fun of the Rays, but I don't think any of their fans stay up late to watch the, the our games anyway. Yeah, that's because they already know the teams in the first place. One for three, Tokamasa Chano. New pitcher on the mound is Fumimaru Taida, or Taura. And there's a little bit of a how do you do back. Taura tips his cap, says sorry about that. But the uh, coincidental timing of the uh, hit by pitches is not lost on me. Taura is only 23 years old. Drafted in 2017 in the fifth round. <laughs> Left hander no, most known for his changeup. So far this season, four for five in holds with a .51 ERA. Over 17 and two thirds innings pitched. Mune with a sacrifice bunt. Good throw by Tauda. Yeah, there are uh, lights on the top of the walls. Little LED strips. If we see a home run by the home team, you'll see those things light up and pull off a rainbow. Good bunt by Mune. That will advance Chano to second. <laughs> Quick out of town scoreboard update. The fighters are clawing nearer. It's 3-2 now in the top of the fifth at Zozo Marine Stadium. Called strike on a fastball. I do like that they're focusing on the RPMs here. I know we had an earlier question about the stat cast migrated here. If it is, we do not have access to it. And not every team has a closer entrance. Uh, Blossom Mirage. But the, at the atmosphere is one of the reasons I'm a Japanese baseball fan. The beer girls, yeah, that maybe is second. Gotta love the vendors who are toting the draft kegs running up and down the stands. Man, I feel for their knees. I feel for their backs, you kidding? I saw one that had like triple knee braces on. I was like, please just take a day off. Ugh. Anyways, 0-2 count here on Kei Nakagawa. Nice bling. Oh, right, the boss. Big Boss Shinjo. And his fighters. Who are making a pretty convincing case for a 500 record right now. It's worth pointing out. Give the fighters credit... They're out of the basement, finally, and actually are competing six games back of the Marines. 
for a postseason spot. Whereas the Lions and uh, Eagles are tied for fifth place. One, two on the way, bouncing the dirt. Kai's up, throwing to third. And, ooh, called safe. Kurihara says, uh, you sure about that? Daring base running there by Chano. Check swing, skitters away from Kai. Good block by Nakagawa. Oh, that's gonna be close. Is Fujimoto gonna call for a replay? Quick check from the dugout. A brief pause. Back to the action. Runner on third now, one out for Kei Tanakagawa. That'll sail out of the field. It's good to see Kotaro Kiyomiya back with the uh, fighters after his breakout last year. I want to see uh, more from him and see him continue to develop. Taura. Good at bat here from Nakagawa. Council 2-2. Two and two. Steady diet of fastballs and change-ups. Satoshi Nakajima, Japan Series winning manager of the Orange Buffaloes, had to take a brief absence from the team due to illness. Good to see him back behind the bench. Will commenting on Kenya Suzuki. Call strike three! Taura ends the battle and gets the strikeout for the second out of the inning. Hat goes flying for the little extra mustard. Oh, good on Taura to catch the hat too. Yes, Kenya Suzuki is wild to watch. Submariners are fun. Not too many of those left in the majors, but there's a couple of good ones here in Japan. My favorite is, of course, for the Tigers, Koyo Aoyagi. And if you play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I'm not sorry, I think it's uh, one of the most recent games. Might, I'm not sure if it's Scarlet, Violet, or Sword and Shield. One of the gym leaders has an underarm throwing motion that's mimicked, that mimics Aoyagi specifically. As Tomoyamori finally gets his first hit of the game and cashes in an RBI for nothing Buffaloes. Not the uh, first NPB reference in uh, the Pokemon series, funnily Th enough. That's true. Those of you who remember the anime, uh, the p character known in America as Casey, who is a fan of the Electabuzz. The Electabuzz are, of course, an XB or a reference to the Tigers. They also refer to uh, the Bay Stars as the Starmies, <laughs> and the Magikarp as, of course, the Carp. No PL fans on the animation staff, I guess. I guess. Right, Adam Simber's a submariner. Shows you how long it's been since I've watched a Blue Jays game. Pacific League has me spoiled. Tongu having a rough day today. That's going to possibly hamper his specifically leading batting average. 0 for 3. Lots of red in that because of that gaudy batting average. Change up outside of the zone. And Tongu chases. Mm. 
Mara's asking for a baseball anime recommendation. Uh, I've heard good things about Princess Nine. I also have been meaning to watch Gurazeni, which is a story of a journeyman lefty reliever trying to make it in the bigs. In particular because in the manga, they actually end up refer mimicking real NPB teams and making joking references to the pre their actual names. Eventually, he even goes to the majors. If you got a lot of time, you can read major. That, that's a kid all the way up from Little League to uh, the majors and then back to Japan. Tongu sends this one into the outfield section. If I'm not mistaken, the Pepe Dome has a museum attached to it dedicated to Sadaharu O. I know it may sound like an odd choice given that he spent his entire career with the Giants, but O was at one point manager of the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks when they won their first few Japan series, and as a result, the team has a soft spot for him. Currently the president, too. Of the team, not of the country. So he's still involved in the team, even though he's like in his late 80s. Yeah, I, I really need to get his autograph. Still working on that. I sent him a letter once. Didn't get anything back. Anyways, top of the seventh. Runner at first. That runner is Tomoyamori DHing today. Tongu waits on pitch number six of the at bat. That's chop. That's going to fall for a base hit. Mori will advance to second. Yanagi Machi gives it a look. That was a big bounce off the Pepe Dome turf. At least it looked like it was a bounce. Nope, it was on the fly. My bad. Little greebling of the uh, video footage caught me off guard. So, runners at first and second now for... Yutaro Sugimoto. He scored the first two runs in this game. One for three with the two RBIs. He has a very clear hot zone. Masaki waits on deck. His arm's ready. He wants to go out for the bottom of the seventh. Continuing his winning run so far. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Sugimoto goes fishing on that slider. You see some fans holding up the Rao. Uh, banners. A lot of team merchandise, a lot of player towels. If there's one thing MPB teams do well, merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. Inside called strike two. Fastball up and in. Taura with such violent force. Maybe he needs his cap size to be brought down like a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. <laughs> Bipolar asking for best hockey anime. I don't know. I think Mars is a Torontonian's better equipped to answer that. I don't think there are any. I remember there was a live action drama called Pride that had a Queen song as its intro. That's the only awareness I have of a hockey. Thing. Ho ice hockey is not that big of a deal in Japan. If you're looking at sport, baseball is the king, of course. Soccer takes a close second, the J1 League, of course, and the whole soccer pyramid. And basketball, also well known over there. Former Rockerton Golden Eagles uh, general manager Marty Keener wound up translating his skills to run uh, one of the basketball teams over there.
Swing and a miss, strike three. Tauda gets out of the jam, only allowing the run run. And now the Hawks fans get to sing Wakataka Gundam. We may get lyrics on screen. Sing along if you know. Okay, hold on a moment. There was a pink car on stilts towards the end of that. What? Okay, I kind of dig the mint green jerseys. That's a look. Now, me personally, I do wonder. Ooh, Yanagita's gonna send that one sky high. Wakatsuki's gonna give it a look. Oh, did he make the catch? No, bounces into the dugout steps. Mint, or like teal, is an underrated color, an underused color in Japan. Most teams will come out with a summer jersey, specifically for the summer months. Yanagita, one for two today. Inside, ball one. That was a fastball, too. Real knee seeker. Only 84 pitches here in the bottom of the seventh for Sachiya Yamazaki. He's putting on a show. Wonder if that scout stuck around. Swing and a miss from Yanagita. But we have to talk about the Buffalo's new uh, summer jersey, because uh, I have thoughts. What does it look like? Green with pinstripes. And gold lettering. That's a choice. Cut her low for ball four. I mean, they've always had an affinity for using odd colors in their uh, summer jerseys. Last year it was gold, just straight gold. Uh, the year before that was dark pinstripes. Yanagita scorched Tongu with a little ole up the first baseline, retires Yanagita. <laughs> Oh yeah, the marine summer jersey with like the black with the pink lettering. Oh yeah, that's a nice look. It's a nice look, but I don't know if I want to be wearing 
all black in mid 90s summer heat. I mean, why do you think the Tigers switched away from black road jerseys back to gray? And they had that weird gradient for a couple seasons. Oh, the gradient. <laughs> and the one with the geometric shapes. I was going to say, like, Tigers fans have got to be doing like that that one Homer Simpson meme. meme. Ah, that's a fine looking summer jersey. Why doesn't mine look like that? I was thinking more the fading into the bushes thing. Huh. Why must I fail at every attempt at Photoshop? Anyways, back to the game. Kenta, you are, uh, my bad. That's Taisei Makihara. 90 kilometers an hour on the curveball. I'd get a ticket for going too slow on the expressway. Makihara, member of the WC Championship team, replacing Seiya Suzuki, who left due to injury. I think he was the one who actually brought Suzuki's jersey out to the mound celebration after Otani struck out Trout. Makihara chops it to Yamasaki for the second out of the inning. Makiata also nicknamed King Joker for his defensive versatility. And an all-star last year. Speaking of the all-star game, that's coming up. Balloting is still available. Make sure you go vote for your favorite Pacific League players to send them to the two-game series for the all-star games. Kunebayashi says, no problem. No problem at all. Through seven, Buffalo's four, Hawks nil. The midnight matinee marches on. Thank you all for sticking around with us. I have watched that Trout Otani at bat uh, more times than I'd care to admit. I mean, Hollywood would ha find it hard to draw up a better ending. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So, I will say, it is nice to have fans back in the stands as opposed to those deeply disconcerting robots that were in the outfield section during the 2020 season when fans weren't allowed into the ballpark. Especially here at Pepe Dome. I know some ballparks had cutouts of fans. Some just played to open or to empty seat stands. The Hawks decided to bring in robots. It was weird. It's real weird. I try not to think about all of that anymore. <laughs> Sometimes uh, on Japanese TV you'll see throwback highlights. And I'm just like, why is there nobody in the stand? Oh, yeah, I forgot. I think that might be a day for Sachi Yamazaki. He's getting some chats from his coaching staff. And you saw someone rub a name out on the whiteboard back there. If so, it's a sterling performance by the left-hander. Seven scoreless innings, only allowing two hits. How <laughs> the robots clap and go. Well, they just sort of like wave back and forth. One walk, two hits, five strikeouts on 90 pitches. If that's his day, that is a fantastic effort. And he hands it over to a bullpen stacked with competent relievers and with as usual every single team having an off day on Monday no sense in not using your best arms there are very few Monday games in NPB usually those are rainouts or holiday games good question from Blossom Mirage does NPB have bark in the park kinds of nights I don't think so New pitcher into the game for the uh, Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks is Yuki Matsumoto. 27-year-old with a powerful fastball. Pitching 44 games for a new career high last season with a 2.66 ERA. His ERA is 3.32 so far in 24 appearances out of the Hawks' bullpen. Kurebayashi sends this one into the seats. Do the fans heckle the players in Japan? No. 
No, they don't. In fact, that brings me back to my point. The first NPB game I ever attended, I tried to do that because it was 2013 and Andrew Jones was playing for the Tohoku Dakuten Golden Eagles. So I decided to razz him a little bit about how his best year started with a 19. And then the very nice Japanese gentleman in front of me told me, in no uncertain terms, sit down and be quiet. Sure enough, if you go on Pacifically TV, if you subscribe, and if you go take a look at the game from August 14th at Zozo Marine Stadium with the Marines hosting the Eagles, sometime in the second inning, uh, Toshiaki Imae, the Marines third baseman, catches a foul ball, and then you'll see me and my best friend Nick, two dumbins, dumbinses in Blue Jays jerseys, sitting up the third base line. Was it like an employee or just another guy? I think it was just another fan. Oh, Pfft. mind your business, bud. Like, really? Well, no, like, it was my first NPB game. I didn't want to, like, cause an international tiff. When in Rome, you know? Philly versus Canada, I guess. That trip was, uh, what? A decade ago. Yikes. Yeah, like, the Tigers fans. And, uh, well, Tigers and Giants. I mean, you're talking about the Japanese equivalent of Red Sox and Yankees, man. Of course there's going to be some vitriol. 1-2 on the way to Kurebayashi. There was something with Marines fans a few years ago. I don't remember what it was. I think they uh, like did, like, what do they call it, a Bronx cheer on something? It was news for like a minute. I think that the Dragons Owen Dunn also got some flack for using uh, the somewhat uncouth pronoun Omai oh in uh, one of their cheers. Take care, Blossom Mirage. I know it's getting late. 2.30 here on the Eastern Time Zone. So for all of you sticking around here for the top of the eighth, thank you for tuning in and continuing to be fans of the Pacific League. And remember, we're back at it again next weekend. Sunday, July 2nd, midnight Eastern. Saturday, July 1st, 9 p.m. Pacific. These Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks will be on the road against the site on the Cebu Lions. Kurebayashi over the third. Kurihara. In time, one away. And I better be seeing a lot of folks because it's a long weekend and y'all got no excuse. Especially my Canadian kindred. Oh yeah, like that, that's true. Uh, not just the Tigers, the Swallows will also add uh, that vulgar term to their cheering of Tokyo Ondo whenever they play the Giants and sometimes even when they don't. Fair point, Dave Johnson. Thank you for correcting me on the record. Slider inside to start off Marwin Gonzalez. Uh, so Bezos Mistress, nice name. Uh, I am broadcasting from Toronto, Canada. Toronto, Ontario. And Mike Bealey is broadcasting from Philadelphia, if memory serves. Yep. If you listen to the podcast, our English language podcast here on this here YouTube channel, Jimbo Bernicki is bro broadcasting from Montreal. Anna, you're in Nova Scotia? My goodness, it's 3.30 in the morning. You must not have anything to do tomorrow. You see that fork ball grip that causes such a sink. Who's in charge of the cheer songs? It is an organization thing. The cheerleaders come up with them, distribute lyrics, sheets to the fans, and yes, they do off-season practice to make sure everyone's on the same page. Gonzalez strikes out looking. Good work there by Yuki Matsumoto. There's that powerful fastball we see down the pike. Welcome. Two down here in the top of the eighth.
And it looks like Yamasaki's night may not be done. Swing and a miss for Wakatsuki. Good slider from Matsumoto. Rebel 4-4 is asking, how are the fighters doing? Let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard. It's currently 3-2 Marines over fighters in the top of the six. Runners at the corners for the catcher, Ariel Martinez. No score change over at Rakumo. Cebu Lions still leading 5-0 over the Marines. That's in the top of the seventh now. <laughs> Will commenting that Fujimoto looks like a Super Mario brother. I always thought he looked like the boss coffee guy a little bit. It's the mustache. It's 100% the mustache. Uh, we don't talk much about the other league, J Fitz. We're not Central League TV. But if you are looking for a way to keep track of games live, there are a number of options. Google has a live scoreboard. I personally use hosted.stats.com. As Wakatsuki strikes out, clean sheet for Yuki Matsumoto. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Sachi Yamazaki out for his eighth inning of work. 90 pitches. Long day at the office for Sachia, but can't argue with the results. It's 4 nothing Buffaloes over Hawks here on the Midnight Matinee. Hector Villagran Reynoso asking who will win the Pacific League? Mm, that's tough. I gotta pull for the Buffaloes, man. Pitching wins championships. The Hawks are going to give him a good scare. It could go down to the last game like last season. And it's been a minute, but more specifically trivia for you. Who, if you know the answer, say it in chat. Who's the all-time leader in strikeouts as a batter for Oryx? Drop your guesses in the chat. While we have this break in the action, now's as good of a time as any to mention that this broadcast is the exclusive content of Pacific League TV and Pacific League Marketing, as well as the six member clubs. Cannot be redistributed or rebroadcast without the express written consent of those six member clubs and Pacific League TV. Miguel Rosado. Hola from Mexico. Hey. Question, what are the regular food beverages that are sold at Japanese stadiums? So, I mentioned before, but worth clarifying, often, you, you can actually see one of them climbing up the stands right now in pink. There's these uh, vendors called Uriko, beer girls. They have draft kegs on their backs, and usually you'll see the big three wandering around the stadium. Asahi, Kirin, and one of either Sapporo or Ebisu. I know some teams actually have their own craft beers. The Eagles have them in a stand up of, in a few points of the ballpark. The Bay Stars have their own craft beer served by the Keg Girls. Kurebayashi runs on this one quick. You have to be quick to get the speedy Nomura for the first out of the, the eighth. Uh, food wise, you'll see things like hot dogs, pizza, karage, curry bowls. Uh, bento boxes, the extruded potato long fries. Defensive substitutions into the game. Marwan Gonzalez takes a seat coming into the game. Koji Oshiro, defensive stud, replacing uh, Yutaro Sugimoto in left is Yuya Oda. Curveball dropped in for strike one. And uh, Yanagi Machi says, I'm not sure about that. For BKM in the chat, yeah, they have gotten better with uh, workloads as of recent. Nagamachi deep fly ball to right. Chano on the track calls it in, two down. Yeah, Ian Woodall, like, these games are super convenient for West Coasters, as well as anyone in Hawaii. 
I'm jealous of the Hawaii time zone. Oh my goodness, yes. My favorite part of it is you wake up in Hawaii and all the dumb news and politics for the day are done. Nothing else to hear about. Yeah, you're going to find Sapporo beer primarily also in uh, Hokkaido. The fighters used to be based out of Sapporo proper. I visited the brewery when I was out there. Takuya Kai, one for two with a double. Gives this one a ride. That's going to hook foul, though. Hawaii also has Japanese supermarkets pretty much every 10 feet. It's amazing. All right, I will say this. The one knock against the green jerseys here at Pepe Dome, the seats are green, too. It's camouflage. I remember at one point Takuya Kai was even being scouted by Major League Clubs. There's that highway speed EFIS curve. Low for ball one. I have a question in the chat. Uh, when's Trevor Bauer's next start? He's throwing right now, actually. But we don't have rights to that game, so we're not going to talk about it. Called strike two. Change up in the upper half. Again, there are options for at least keeping track of the live scores, and some teams do have their own YouTube channels in which they broadcast highlights. Yahoo Sports Navi on Yahoo JP is my personal uh, recommendation. That's true. Baseball.yahoo.co.jp. Swing and a miss from Kai. That'll end the eighth inning. Sachi Yamasaki, let the big dog eat. Look at the fork ball grip there. Sinks. Kai goes down swinging. To the top of the ninth we go. The answer to you, the trivia question about who leads the Oryx Buffaloes in career strikeouts as a batter is T. Okada with 1,172. But he has a Japan Series ring, so whatever. A scoreboard update. Will caught this a while ago. Good work by the fighters. That game is tied at threes. In the top of the sixth. Looks like it was either Yuki Nomura or Daigo Kamikawabata with the RBI. Yuji Nishino's day is done. Sakamoto is pitching to Tamura. With Arzmendi Alcantara, another one of those foreign batters, at the plate. <laughs> I know everyone watches the Marines just for Doki Sasaki. We know this. Is that a Captain America thing on uh, Yuma Mune's headband? That's a look. New pitcher into the game for the Hawks. Otaka Shuto. Interesting in that, I think one of those kanji is the kanji for Hawk and Taka, or at least sounds the same. First round pick in the 2017 draft. 5.06 ERA in four appearances so far this season. Wakatsuki, or uh, Yamazaki for the Hawks. Buffaloes. Sachi Yamazaki for the Ho Buffaloes. Only 97 pitches. If he can have a very quick inning, he may actually count as a uh, as a Maddox. New left fielder into the game, replacing Tatsuru Yanagimachi. It's Seiji Uebayashi. Oh my mistake! It's Ogata. I misheard. Fastball slider combination. 
has been used primarily in the Nigun team. That's the farm team for the Hawks. I have to be specific, it's the second level one because the Hawks have like three. Chano swings and misses at this one. Or chops a foul, count as one and one. Hey, Bipolar, it's our pleasure. We're here to educate, to entertain, and to get punch drunk because it's getting late in the night. Called strike two. Ogata just showing the heater so far. One, two on the way. There's that slider. Big leg kick. Ogasa is one of those pitchers who really tries his best to hide his arm behind his body through his pitching motion. Chano chops this one just foul. Kurihara picks it up. First out of the ninth. We've actually gained viewers as the game's gone on. We're sitting at 78. I'll be pitching to Yuma Mune. Line through the right side for a base hit. Good batting by Yuma. First bit swing. I didn't even get to mention this. If you're wondering why he uh, has the skin tone he does, his father is Guinean and his mother is of West African descent. Yamazaki is getting loose. Sachi Yamazaki could be going for the complete game shutout. I don't think we've seen that here on the Midnight Matinee before. Keita Nakagawa looks at strike one. 150 on the radar gun. There's the heat from Mogata. Two walks, two strikeouts so far for Keita Nakagawa. Would be cool to see that third true outcome. There's the foul whistles. It will be interesting to see how the rest of the season goes here in the Pacific League. There's a bit of a, a dividing line between top half and bottom half. So even the Marines are still in the postseason chase. Slider high for ball one. You can always tell when we're flagging a little bit because the commentary slows down. Swing and a miss, strike three. Pained grunt from Nakagawa, who gets the hat trick of strikeouts. Enjoy your golden sombrero. A ah, question from Koyomi Matic about Chusei Manami. Pacific League MVP on the batter side for the month of May. His father's from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Tomoya Mori. One for four today with an RBI. Inside with a slider, ball one. I ran out of boss coffee and I have more in the fridge, but my house is haunted, so I don't want to go get it. Mori with that batting stance and the fl 
flamingo leg kick, very reminiscent of Sadaharu O, who we mentioned earlier. So how much rope do you give Sachiya Yamasaki here, Mike? Uh, Going into the bottom of the ninth, the way. up by four. Yeah, let him go. Slider in the dirt. Count is 3-0. and oh. Looks like Ogata wants nothing to do with Tomoyamori. This may be one of those intentional, unintentional walks. It's it's funny. There's a lot of talk about pitch counts these days, and I went back and watched an MLB game from the 80s. Starter got to the fifth inning. And what do you think they talked about? Pitch count? His pitch count. So it's been a thing for decades now. Time is a flat circle, my friend. Fastball pumped in for a get-me-over strike. Uh, Eagles starting a tiny little rally over in Rakumo. Runners at first and second in the bottom of the seventh. On the warning track, Makihata hauls this one in. Mori once again misses out on a home run. So Sachi Yamasaki goes for the complete game shutout when we return. Wait, what am I talking about? We're not going to break. When you watch the Midnight Matinee or any game on Pacific League TV, there's no commercials. No blackouts, no commercials. I mean, it really is the best baseball viewing experience, even if you don't have our lovely voices on it. Dude, some of the ads on, like, radio recently have just been way out of hand. And your, sco your scoreboard says, who? Which is kind of the noise that all these Hawks fans have been making so far today. Like, there's this one ad trying to sell shorts, and I'm just so sick of hearing it. Oh, Every that's the one you referenced in the podcast. Okay. It's so annoying. It's like, <laughs> my God, shut up, dude. And there's another one for some, like, net implementation company. And I swear to God, the ad goes, does your business make $100 million a year? Dude, if my business made $100 million a year, I ain't listening to a radio game. Like who? Who is your market? Who is your audience here? It's not me. Distortion music calling for the CG show. Ninety-eight pitches for Sachi Yamasaki. Six strikeouts. Only the three base runners on two doubles and a walk. And the other day I got a different sterling. ad for Lululemon, and I swear to God I woke up one day and Lululemon suddenly existed. Uh, I live in Canada. Trust me, Lululemon's been here a while. It's like I woke up and all of a sudden everyone everyone's like pretending it's been there. <laughs> it's like, well, who are you people? This is no Berenstein effect here, my my man. Trust me about this. Akira Nakamura, 360 on base percentage coming into today's game. 100 pitch of the game for Sachi Yamasaki. Cutter low. Ball one. Very efficient in the late innings. You see only eight pitches required in both the seventh and the eighth. Aging like a fine wine. Nakamura, sky to center, charging. That's going to fall for a base hit. Lands in no man's land. If memory serves, the founder of Lululemon chose the name specifically because Japanese tourists would find it fun and difficult to say. That physically hurt me. <laughs> Yamasaki may have just watched his uh, shutout bid disappear. We'll see. Leadoff man is aboard. Akina Nakamura, last game, Sayonara Hiro. Kenta Imamiya, the Pacific League record holder for sacrifice bunts. We'll see if he drops one down here. Two strikeouts and a fly to right. Imamiya sends this one into the stands. 
off the facing of a railing, it looked like. At what point does your arm just start feeling like a refried rubber band? Uh, mine personally, after like three pitches. Oh, two on the way to Imamiya. Foul to the backstop. No action in the dugout for the Buffaloes. None whatsoever. Also, I didn't realize this until recently. You know who's on the coaching staff for the Buffaloes? I think he's their, one of their base coaches. Let me know if this name sounds familiar, Mike. So Taguchi. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a name. That's a, he was with the uh, Oryx. And the Phillies. The Blue Wave. Yeah, and the Blue Wave. And the Cardinals, which is where I remember him. Fly out to right, Chino collects. Nakamura does not advance. One down here in the bottom of the ninth. I think it was the same season the Phillies had both Taguchi and Iguchi. Yeah, both of them. Ichido really did knock down the the wall there for uh, Japanese batters. Without him succeeding, I don't think you see Hideki Matsui, Taguchi, Muninori Kawasaki, Seiya Suzuki, or Yoshida. Kondo held hitless so far today. I have to look up his height because he looks like a short king. He is five foot seven. We stand our short kings in the NPB. Skyed. On the infield, Oshiro says, yoink, two down. <laughs> so runner on first, two down, and Yuki and Agita. One for three with a double. Nine home runs. So clearly taking the uh, WBC off was the right call for Yanagita. I mean, Brian B., they also had the Colorado Avalanche winning the Stanley Cup, what was it, two seasons ago? It is literally the Hydra Dragon emoji. Yanagita puts a charge into this one, deep in a right field, and that one's gone to the Owendon! We're not even gonna see the home run trot, are we? Yuki Yanagita with his 10th home run of the season, and the Hawks have life here in the bottom of the ninth with two down. 4-2 the score. As Robert Tomlinson would say, ball go far. Well, that's a vibe killer. No kidding. 124 meters with a 25 degree launch angle. Oof! Yanagita has that patented uppercut swing. He got all of that one. That into the Ondan, Satoshi Nakajima going, ah. Dang it. <laughs> well then. There goes a the shutout. We'll see if he's going to hang around for the complete game. Nope, oh, that will be his day. Eight and two-thirds innings. Just the two earned runs on the one mistake pitch. So he got geeted.
That was one of those ones you could kind of tell right off the bat. Yeah, it, it just looked like it. Hit on the screws. So now we might see uh, the closer for the Buffaloes, Yoshihisa Hirano, or maybe the fireballer, Yuki Udagawa. Yeah, I'd sit under the fans in the Pepe Dome too. That place can get stuffy with the lid shut. When I was in Kyoseta Dome, they actually had air conditioning vents on the ba seat backs of the row in front of you, which was rather clever. Every time I've been, it's always been that weird uh, time between spring and summer, so they don't have the AC on anywhere. It's, it's a time. A familiar face to fans of the North American game, Yoshihisa Hirano, coming out of the bullpen, is having a sterling season so far. Three holds, ten saves, a 1.2 ERA. And when it comes to familiarity, he pitched... For the Diamondbacks in 2018 and 2019, the Seattle Mariners in 2020, and the Buffaloes sandwiched in between them. And yes, he's a Japan Series champion. Taisei Makihara, King Joker. Flares this one foul, he's quickly in an 0-2 hole. Hirano wasting no time showing off the heat. I get the appeal with Hirano, go with a different look. Hard thrower from the right side instead of Yamasaki, the finesse pitcher from the left. That one also is fouled out of play. You gotta appreciate these pitchers who have such storied careers. If I'm not mistaken, Yoshihisa Hirano actually has 200 saves combined between the Majors and NPB. Bouncing the dirt for ball one. First off-speed pitch we've seen, fork ball. Five-time All-Star, Pacific League saves leader in 2014, and middle reliever of the year in 2011. Makihara's making him work for it, though. Count is still 1-2. Look at all that high heat up in the zone. Makihara trying to turn things over to Kurihara. A feared batter in his own right. That's chopped outside the reach of... Oshiro into right field. The Hawks still hanging on. And now the tying run comes to the plate for the Hawks. Ryoya Kurihara. That pitch was at his ankles and just outside of the outstretched arm of Koji Oshiro. Well, I had hopes this game was going to finish before 3 in the morning, but nope. <laughs> yeah, that's usually the case. I don't think we've had a single midnight matinee finish before 3 in the morning. Every time you start to think, wow, this game's going quick, you get a... Uh... Nope. Nope. Yeah, Will commenting, that's a Vlad the Elder type swing. True, true. Here's Kurihara, the third baseman. Fastball away. Count is 2-0 quickly. Yanagita and his ignoble top knot watching from the bench. Out of town scoreboard update. The Lions wriggled out of the jam. Still 5-0 Lions over Eagles. Bottom of the eighth. While... Hirokazu Sawamura is on the mound for the Marines as the fighters have something going. Runners at first and second. Top of the seventh. That's Zozoma. On the ground. Foul! Grabbed by Tongu. Nice little spinorama, but that is foul. 
Cody Turnbull. Yep, we're East Coast. As fun as it'd be to have extras. All the Orcs fans in the chat would probably dislike it. That ball's going to skitter away from Wakatsuki. That'll advance the runner. Makihata to second. Thinks about making the turn to third. And now there's another run in scoring position. Uh, Major Bats 25. If you're looking for Bauer, uh, he's already pitched today. And that's in the other league. We don't talk about them. Just watch the, the his, his YouTube vlogs. Hey, M. Seibert. Yep, we've got English commentary for about one game a month. And now the tying runs at first and the go-ahead run comes to the plate. Quick confab with Hirano trying to figure out how to deal with Isami Nomura. Pinch runner as expected, the speedster stolen base phenom, Ukyo Shuto, taking over at first for Kurihara. Pinch hitter here for Isami Nomura is Hikaru Kawase. Kawase, a 25-year-old, drafted by the Hawks in the 2015 draft. 278 batting average last year. Hey, we're happy to do ruin our sleep schedule. If you want more Pacific League baseball with English commentary without wrecking yours, tune in to FTF Sports Tuesday through Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern for a Pacific League game of the day. Called strike down the pike. Hikaru getting some cheers. Popped up. Oshido calls for it. Ball game Buffaloes. Bent but unbroken. The Orcs Buffaloes avoid the sweep here at Pepe Dome and draw back into a tie. Well, kind of. The Hawks still lead in terms of games in hand in the Pacific League pennant race. It's going to keep being close. Question for you, Mike, who's your hero going to be? I know, it, I think it's pretty obvious, but would you go with uh, anyone other than the starting pitcher, Sachi Yamasaki? Uh, if you're going to give to anybody else, I'd say I think you have to have Sugimoto up there for the hero interview. Drove him two it, runs, didn't he? Interesting call, going with the batter instead of Yamasaki. I can see that appeal. Well, the hero interview is usually uh, two players, isn't it? Uh, it uh, not always. The depends Sometimes on the team, yeah. Well, if the, I think the pitcher's going to get it. If he doesn't, though, then I would have to go with uh, Sugimoto. So, if you're still craving more Japanese baseball and you aren't completely wrecking your sleep schedule, tune in to WatchDingo.com right now to catch the remainder of the Chiba Latte Marines hosting the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters and the Rakuten, Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles hosting the Saitama Seibu Lions. No commentary, but hey, it's free if you're in North America. If you're not, Pacific League TV is just a couple clicks away and only costs you 1,500 yen a month or around 13 US dollars. That gets you every single Pacific League game, including the farm teams and an archive spanning decades. That, in addition to FDF Sports, plenty of ways to watch Pacific League Baseball. All right, we're going to let y'all listen to the hero interview here in just a moment.
Be sure to tune in to our next broadcast next weekend. Saitama Seibu Lions hosting the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks at the Luna Dome in Tokorozawa. So all you Canadians, all you Americans, you got a long weekend. Come join us. Tell your friends. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all that youtube -y stuff. And watch the previous YouTube live games. Buffalo Bell, please get out of the shot. <laughs> Here on the YouTube channel, listen to our podcast. And we'll catch you next week. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. ま、自分自身の、え、そうですね。やっぱり、ま、最後まで、え、気は抜けないので、え、本当一戦一戦、え、チーム それでは今日もたくさんのファンの皆さんが応援してくださいました。最後にメッセージをお願いします。チーム自治体もえ、いい順位にいるので、え、絶対に優勝目指して、え、頑張ってきます。え、応援よろしくお願いします。ありがとう